well, 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 look who decided to show up again. It's Twitch chat. How is everybody? And welcome back to Paleontologizing. It's good to have you here today. I uh, hope you're doing well. And I hope you can see and hear me. Yeah. And Trixmot, thank you for signing up on Patreon. I do really appreciate that. That does help. Yeah, excellent. Well. Uh, beautiful. Thank you, Claire. Thank you for being here, Claire. It's good to see you. Uh, thank you for being Claire, and thank you for being here, Claire. Anyway, welcome to Paleontologizing, everybody. i am got to admit, I'm not firing on all cylinders today. Apologies for that. We had a big storm roll through camp last night. Uh, messed up my tent a little bit. It actually bent the uh, tension bar at the top of the tent. Uh, anyway, and I had some equipment difficulties earlier, too. Uh, didn't get the most sleep last night. None of us did, so if we seem a little tired, that's why. But uh, still excited to have you here. And a welcome to the beautiful desert of eastern Utah. Uh, yes, these clouds are real. It's one of the questions I get here on Twitch, believe it or not, is are those clouds real? Yes. But when you go outside, sometimes there are clouds in the sky, and sometimes they look like that. <laughs> um... But yeah, yeah, it is dinosaur time, little Teresa. Yeah. If anybody's here for the very first time, well, let me tell you what you've stumbled into. My name is Danny Anduza. I'm a dinosaur paleontologist. And I'm here on Twitch trying to do some good old-fashioned science outreach. Normally, you know, when it's not summertime, that means I'm back in my office. You know, we're discussing new, you know, papers, new published discoveries in fossil science. I'm doing Q&A. Uh, 3D modeling and 3D printing of fossils and fleshed out dinosaurs and stuff like that. Interviewing other paleontologists. But you know what? It's summertime right now. And summertime means field work if you're a field paleontologist. And so I'm out with Utah Geological Survey crew here in eastern Utah. And we're digging up what could very well be a new species of dinosaur. Maybe several new species of dinosaur, really. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. How was your day off yesterday, Trixmont? It was pretty great. Yeah, I went down to Moab, Utah. Uh, me, Fisher Jim, and Justin went down there. And, uh, yeah, I went to the food trucks, went to the bookstore, um, went to the Moab rock shop and poked around a little bit. That was kind of fun. Did some bathing there. It was really nice. So, uh, really didn't want to leave until, uh, what was it? Emory County search and rescue boat wanted to pull in. We're like, okay, we'll get out of your way. Um, anywho, yeah, good stuff. But yeah, we're here digging up some dinosaurs. Let me take you down to the quarry and show you what we've got going on. Any and all questions are welcome. This is the whole point of this is science outreach, showcasing the work of our crew here. And we can only do that thanks to. Satellite dish, router, solar battery, and solar panels. My other two solar panels stopped working this morning, so I gotta figure out what's going on with that. Hopefully they're still under warranty. But, uh... <laughs> anyway, let's go see what's going on down there. All right, we're live, everybody. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Bunch of tired people. Yep. Uh-oh. Don't tell me you're all broke. <laughs> What's that? You're all broke. Uh, it's still usable for now, yeah. Oh, man. I thought you bad. asked, oh, oh, are you all broke? It's like, we're paleontologists, though. Of course we're all yes. broke. <laughs> now we're doubly all broke. But yeah, my all no uh, has come apart. This I've only been using this for like seven or eight years, so. Yeah. yeah. I've got a new one in my tent, but it doesn't have, doesn't have that metal pawling or whatever you call it right there. Yeah, so. well, that drives the vibrations right through it. Yeah. It's actually better. I like that's why I like screwdrivers. Yeah. The plastic, you know, the Sears Craftsman, you know. Oh, okay. Life, yeah. No matter how stupidly you use it. <laughs> <laughs> like chisel, make it a chisel in the front. You know, yep. And then Sears even rail on it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> you know. So of course we've got. I don't know if that's really ethical, Jim. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> We've got Don and Jim here, the state paleontologists for the state of Utah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, it's gonna be a pretty low-key, just kind of chill stream today, despite how hot it is out here. We so. got bones. So. Yeah, we got lots of bones. Yeah, uh, you haven't seen Jim and I in the same place, so yeah, yeah. It's nice to have you both. Wrestle for both dominance. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's right. You can have all the dominance he wants. Yeah. And oh, very cool. We've got a viewer from Australia. This is my friend just found a new pterosaur jaw. No ID yet. Out in Western Queensland. Excellent. Literally came out of the ground yesterday. It's fragmentary, so they may not be able to ID it. But they've got very limited pterosaur material, so no, could be important. Problematicus. <laughs> your name. It's all important. Because yeah. we know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, good stuff. Anyway, Fisher is doing some mapping right now. Yeah, I'm getting this little astragalus or foot bone mapped. Uh, so this is the stuff I've been working on for the past, like, I don't know, five or six days. For a good while, um, yeah. Got a big long bone here, probably like a tibia. So like, mm -hmm. a bone that's like right here. Yeah, or on the midline, yeah. yeah. Tibula's on the side. Yeah. Not to correct. The medial you know side, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and then we have this kind of mystery bone here, which could be like the the maxilla, so like the tooth bearing bone in the upper part of the jaw. Uh -huh. And so Ethan thinks this is might maybe like the dorsal surface. This is kind of where the premaxilla would attach, uh, and this like hump here is like where the jugal would go on. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, it really looked like a weird ilium to me at first, yeah, but it's maxilla so might make a lot more sense. It's so small to be a ilium. Though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless it's been just been around, chomped up. Yeah. Let's keep that We've got some confirmation bias happening now. <laughs> Dig it, maxilla. It'd be fun. I mean, we want it to be a maxilla. Yeah. We want skull bones out here. So, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, Dinosaur Dave says it looks like a jumbled hot mess. Love it. I mean, jumbled that's what it usually looks like. It's not like in Jurassic Park where you've got a no. beautiful articulated skeleton. Eventually, just... there'll be mounted skeletons. This. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no question. <laughs> But hopefully people appreciate how much work goes into this, you know, because um, this is what it actually looks like in the field, you know. Many mounted skeletons are lacking this bone here. Yeah. Which one's that? The sternal. Oh, sternal. Very nice. Yeah, I didn't know you had a sternal, sternal there, Jim. Right here. Just Carefully appeared. Yeah, we've got a rib going in Beautiful. there. Something there uh -huh. that's underneath my peanut lid. But this looks <laughs> broken, but... Uh -huh. Let's see more of that. Uh, there's a rib and just keeps going under the cliff. Because <laughs> that's one of the rules of paleontology. If you have a long bone, it will find the cliff and go under it and hide from you. <laughs> you know, so we'll preservation. Get to, you have to do some more overburden over here. At Eventually, point. but this one, yeah. we're going to get, yeah, we'll get that out. We'll get that out first. Nice. Yeah, that'll be yeah. nice. That's a good bone. Sternal. Is that, how diagnostic is a sternal in a guanodontia? Sternals can be pretty reasonably useful. Yeah. You know, the style of sternals are generally, mm -hmm. you know, consistent through groups of animals. Right. But then the fine points, you know, it's one of these things where you can do shape analysis pretty well. Nice. It's, it's got, you know, basically this big blade, very thin blade here. Mm -hmm. A lot of cartilage interaction there, and then this piece that goes up in the main area, yeah. you know, connecting with the shoulder girdle. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, that shape, you know, there's... A little more, you know, when you got yeah, cartilage, I always think you can have a little more room for noise in terms of the yeah. bone cartilage interface. Mm -hmm. A little but, bit more plasticity. But that's definitely in the chest, re chest region. We don't know if we got one. We can't really think. And do we have one for, for this animal yet? Oh, nice. So we're not quite sure. We might. Uh -huh. Don was saying, I can't believe we don't. <laughs> but <laughs> now we have so many things. Let me grab my iguanodon uh, chart. And a pretty big sternal for the size of the animal, so that's good. Nice. Yeah, from a big boy. Show you where the sternal goes, everybody on the skeleton. Over here. This is not the skeleton of our particular animal here, because our animal here is most likely new. But this is a close relative, Iguanodon. The sternal is right up there in the chest. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, as opposed to, like, Iguanodon burnus artensis here. Jim, how much smaller do you think our animal is than this? This one? Because that's, that's a one meter scale bar there. Mm hmm Yeah, it's probably... Well, Guanaclossus itself is probably, get, you know, the, is getting close to that size. Uh -huh. But this animal could well be a different taxa related to it. Yeah, as yeah. Our, Potential you know, ancestor. The spectrum of things in the Bermuda of Asia. I mean, mm -hmm. Asia, Europe. 
don't remember what continent we're talking about. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, you know, the picture here doesn't show you much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> behind, behind the humerus. Yep. But, uh, you know, we can make out and see real thin bone in here. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll go way out and see that in the lab, but we know it's aerial extent. And now I'll just kind of get this out of the way, so I'm going to go down and put a cap on it. Yep. I'll probably get a cap on this rib, you know, here, because uh -huh. it's it's going to be exposed for a while, I think, before, unless we decide, well, we got to take it in two sections just mm -hmm. to uh, keep this area clean. Because I want to keep going down, there's more bone. Yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly, but that's, that's a good one. Nice. And this little coddle. Yeah, from way out there. Yeah, distal tail yeah. Nice. Not, not too much fancy. They're not the most diagnostic bones. Yep. In these things. It's good to have, but not necessarily. Yeah, sternal's got. We're not going to name anything based we'll, on we'll, coddle. Yeah, we won't name anything on a sternal either. <laughs> Never been done. We couldn't say, "Hey, we're the first. <laughs> but uh, iguana sternus. Sometimes you don't want to be the first. Or no. <laughs> yeah, sternal colossus. Yeah. Uh, uh, At least he's uh, meeting his performance goals over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sorry our, our broadcast is a little bit late today, but Jim and Don had to have a, uh, a meeting. Luckily, they were able to use the, the satellite internet here, so they didn't have to drive back to Salt Lake. But yeah. uh, They're changing the way we're judged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do we evaluate these people and make sure that we are not cheaping out <laughs> the <laughs> citizens of Utah? To the state. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you folks tell them we're doing a good job. We yeah. work hard. <laughs> I mean, that's part of what this you know these broadcasts are about is just to show, <laughs> hey, this is how this is field how paleontology works. works. Yeah. yeah, this is how we do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then dumb muffs. Hey, thank you so much for the raid. You and your ten raiders, welcome to paleontologizing. Let me know if you've got any questions. Yeah, they say hope the weather is not too harsh today. No, it's, uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, very pleasant today. Here, let's, uh, let's actually break out the thermometer, get an official reading. You ready? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, it's climbing. It's climbing. Anybody want to guess? 94. 95. 99. What? Yeah. Wow. So, uh. Oh, 98.99, sorry. <laughs> You're right, Don, it was lower. <laughs> yeah. Up, oh, down to 97. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think our record so far with that thermometer is 111. Um, that seems a little bit of an over... You think? Could be. That's a little hyperbole thermometer there. It's higher than the vehicle thermometer, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, according to... Mm. Kind of but yeah, yeah. Smoky Rebels wants to know, do all the bones still remain present? Mm. We would hope so, but no, definitely not. Um, no, some of the bones got scattered or eaten or... They were here on the surface and they eroded... Actually, none of these bones were on the surface. Right? Our Guanadanchian bones is all from a horizon that none of these yeah, were exposed. In this site, probably not. Yeah. But I have definitely had bones that had surface weathering actually where the surface had obviously come down lower for a while. Oh. And etched the bones. Oh, like up. in the ancient environment. <clears throat> yeah. Gotcha. Or then reburials. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally you do get complete dinosaur skeletons, but they're fairly rare. In this case, this is like an ancient swamp. Maybe Jim we, will talk a little bit about that. We have associated skeletons here. Oh yeah, yeah. Rib cages and vertebral columns. Uh huh. That nearest leg. Glenn was a pretty complete animal. You know, stretched its entire vertebral column. Nice. You know, ribs, pelvis. Uh huh. And really looking forward to opening that block. Cause could the head be under it? Oh, you know, nice. <laughs> you know, tucked in behind the hips. One can hope. Yeah. yeah. That's how they found that big skull in Mexico. Yeah, they right by the hip. Tail, they were undermining the tail when they found it. Uh -huh. They thought they had a tail. And, oh, here's a head. That happened with the Wonkel Rex, too, in yeah. Montana, yeah. The skull came off, and it was right up against the Ilia, I think. Yeah, well, we always it happens. That, but there's so many animals here mm -hmm. in every single part. You just want to get parts for a big one and a little one to 
for comparative mounts, which would be nice yeah. someday. But someday, hopefully, you and Chat will be able to go and see this in the uh, the Natural History Museum of Utah. See this animal mounted. And probably other museums as well. Other museums like, too. Oh, I just mold the cast the bones. Yeah. Oh, shoot, a ton of dinosaurs that Jim and Don have dug up here in Utah are now viewable around the world. Like, shoot. When I was in uh, Cleveland a few weeks ago, I was, you know, most of their... They're renovating the museum, so there wasn't a whole lot to see. So I made sure I saw every square inch of the museum. I went downstairs into, like, the basement area, and bow, right there. Big, beautiful skull of Diabloceratops from Utah. Don found that. And, uh, yeah. They're in Cleveland, Ohio. And they see dinosaurs that Jim and Don have dug up in Japan and probably multiple other countries There's around the world. A bunch of them in Japan. A bunch of them in Japan, yeah. A bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're big in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, another common question. I need to come up with a command for this so people can just call that up. But easy revenge great name wants to know how did the site get chosen to dig at was there anything uh any signs this would be a good spot well shoot yeah who wants to answer that well yeah 15 years ago we thought it might be a good spot yeah <laughs> and then we found bones here and then yeah this is our 15th season working at this site, shoot so yeah out of the last 17 years so. well we got more bones coming out that what fisher found mm -hmm. halfway to camp coming yeah. out of one of the drainages they yeah the same level uh-huh which because it also outcrops right behind don's tent uh-huh <laughs> so this is like a, a couple acres site big old swamp 140 million years ago and all kinds of dinosaurs would get preserved in it and uh yeah shoot seems to be under the entire valley floor here so when yeah. you're up there panning around say underneath all of that uh -huh. your dinosaurs go <laughs> if if we could live forever jim how long do you think it would take us to excavate thousands of years thousands of years do it right you yeah know? You know, if it was our crew here yeah you, have, you know had a thousand you know skilled people digging all over uh -huh. maybe not so long yeah <laughs> That doesn't happen the way funding goes. Exactly, yeah. Oh, man. We'd probably get bored and have to move to a different site. <laughs> Which we're going to do this fall. We're working a different site. Yeah, yeah. It's as big as this, uh -huh. but younger. I'm, I might even show up for that, too, and if I do, I'll bring you along, chat. But, uh, yeah. We actually went to visit that site yesterday uh, and uh, collected some... Uh, some rock there to hopefully run some radiometric dates on or get a radiometric date for that rock i'll be talking all about this once we hammer out uh how this is going to work but I'm hoping to do a fundraiser with all of you to raise money so that we can actually get a radiometric date on those rocks figure out exactly how old they are because it's going to be really scientifically important um yeah literally yeah. could span could span over 10 million years before major long turnover, I'd like to know where. Uh -huh. Closer to where. Even if we narrow it down to two to three million, it'll be a lot better than yeah. maybe 12 million years mm -hmm. that could possibly be. Because right now it's kind of a mystery how old those rocks are, and having a firmer date on that is going to be super, super helpful. So it's definitely a worthy cause. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about that later. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Dinosaur Dave, Jim, who's who's making the Lego Gastonia for you, he asked, what's your favorite color? My favorite color? Yeah. You, you'll, you'll like the tweed. Tweed? <laughs> Are there Paisley. tweed Lego bricks, Paisley. Dinosaur Dave? No, Paisley. 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 I like patterns. <laughs> patterns. A beautiful patterns. olive shell or something. You know, okay. Or uh, Conus tex Textalis. That's I don't know if that's going to show up in a, a small Lego model. But. Sorry you asked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Lego's short on that. They just need to do a tweed Lego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that answers your question, Dennis or Dave, but yeah. Uh, if you had to I pick like a basic color for the Gastonia to be, what would you want it? Oh, I match my orange. Orange? Orange. Maybe. I like that. I like that a lot. That's actually stand out on the shelf, so yeah. you would you would be prominent. Which is the funny. It's a funny <laughs> thing because um, most of the dinosaurs that we actually have good color data on are orange, <coughs> like yeah. Sinoceropteryx, um, Cetacosaurus, Borealopelta. Yeah. yeah, all all orange. I guess like Microraptor and Archaeopteryx are 
Maybe the two exceptions to that? They're that, both black? But is that a thing related to looking at uh, yeah. bacteria uh -huh. and call it thinking they're little melanosomes, uh, melanosomes instead? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, a good I question. Know, yeah. hey, you gotta look at it because yeah. our Utah Raptor block, the bones are covered in bacteria. Uh -huh. And they look awful like those things and they're on the bones are clearly bacteria. Huh. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, oh, and thank you, Bert Cow, for your kind words. I appreciate that. Welcome. Yeah. And, and is there just one single example of this species over here? We've got a whole bone bed. So there's multiple individuals of this iguanodon. Probably at least 20 of them. At least 20 of them. Iguanodon. Nice. All sizes. Yeah. And they, we don't know how or why they died, but this is probably attritional, right? This is not like a mass death assemblage. No, because there's there's multiple levels. Yeah. You know, it's a marsh deposit. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, and where this is might be a muddy area on the side, you know. Yeah. But we have tons of burn evidence that burns are growing here. Yeah. We have evidence of little minnows swimming around among the burns. Our seropod, you know, right behind me was mired, uh -huh. so it got its legs stuck and it died over weeks. It would have been a sad thing to see. Yeah. Uh, so some of these animals are probably also getting mired, mm -hmm. but also uh, perhaps you know, washing out during season. Carnivores rain. taking them out because yeah. we have chromosaurs. Yeah. We have teeth, the big carnosaurs. We do have a carnosaur quadrate, so it's uh -huh. a piece of the skull. So we know they're here. So there's a lot happening, but the marsh, there's swales, and we see bones generally, almost any spot we dig, yeah. about three levels, but it doesn't go everywhere in three levels. Can you explain there's what a swale swaling. is? Yeah. Swale is just the, the surfaces of the, the mud at the time of burial would come up and down. It the, rel the, rel yeah. the relief is a meter, uh -huh. you know, a meter and a half, you know, because the overall system of this thing goes across the whole basin. Right. But you can't, you say, oh, look at this surface. There's just stuff everywhere. Uh -huh. You'll find all of a sudden, oh, there's stuff above it now. And, uh -huh. oop, it's kind of, you know, fiddling out. Uh -huh. You know, so it could be stuff from the same exact time, just uh, kind of adhering to the contours yeah. of that. And the swales are over many meters. Yeah. Width, you know, tens yeah. of meters. But um, why they're like that, a whole bit, we're not sure. We're yeah. still learning. That's one of the reasons why we've got these quarry maps, um, like uh, Fisher is working on over there. Try and document where each and every element comes from in here. Every single bone, even like little fragments of bones. It could be important information. Figure out like, uh, is there a pattern there? All the big bones on one side of the quarry and the small bones on another or something like that. It can show you direction of flow if there was a river coming through or something. Um, that's why that, um, that information is important to, to collect. And there, these are probably deposits of these swales during flood events. Cause, mm -hmm. You know, as we dig, we find pebbles. If you, you shown rocks with it, here's yeah, a pebble. Yeah. pebble. Mm -hmm. there's, all, there's all these, you know, centimeter-sized pebbles. Yeah. Just floating through the rock. There's partly fossilized pieces of fern roots. Right. You know, so they're nearby, uh -huh. already turning into fossils, yeah. and getting reworked into this stuff. Uh-huh. You, know, you know, the complexities are really interesting. Yeah. But it's, uh, there's got to be floods. Those pebbles aren't dropping into meteorites. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shirt meteorites. Yeah, but they're floating yeah. in the mud. I had one over there earlier. Yeah. Oh, I'm um, finding. Oh, they're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons yeah. Of them. And why are they here in the mud? That's what we call poor sorting. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, clay's all clay. Yep. Pebble beds, all pebbles. Yep. This is, you know, we call it a pebbly mudstone. Mm hmm. Yeah. Cool. I'll set the camera down over here and uh, let me get back to work. Yeah. But keep those yeah. questions coming in. A little dome shape. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, just a little pebble. That was probably yeah. not a pebble, but that one's kind of funky. Yeah, look it at almost that. Looks like a little weird little inclusion in the rock there. Just chert. Nice. Nice and solid. Yeah, had a beautiful little piece of white chert that almost looked like marble earlier. Oh, that's nice to see. Yeah. Mm hmm. We've got 263 people watching. Been streaming for less than half an hour. Not too shabby. Let's see. 
this going to be a good one. I don't think we have a journal nearly. Well, let's have our camera down over here. On this side, uh, Hippo Drac. What we do is a perfect journal. This thing going to the wall. <laughs> Until I chunder it. <laughs> Which I will not do. I will be careful. Around it a bit and put a cap on it. It's like the baby. There we are. Nice. I went in and popped out. Good job, Dennis Designs. Oh, his name Dennis. <laughs> uh, have you all watched Jurassic Park slash World? And what would be <laughs> your favorite movie of the films? Definitely the newest one. The newest one. <laughs> the one that's the most awesomest. <laughs> Got the most dinosaurs in it. And all those locusts and stuff. Um, no, I think, yeah, the first Jurassic Park is... Pretty hard to beat. Yeah, a lot, a lot of those, you know, screwy science, you know, the brachiosaur rearing. Oh, that was kind of sad. That was a little. Oh. Oh man. really? Oh, How yeah. do you think they would have? I uh, was like, oh, like wow, that's so neat. As soon as it reared, I was like, oh. <laughs> How would they have made it then? They're so, they're, they're so, they like probably almost climb up on their mate. Do you think so? Oh yeah, because they're, I mean, they're so front heavy. Uh huh. I mean, brachiosaurs. They definitely are. Yeah. Are brachiosaurs are not built to rear. The arm lizard. Yeah. You know, that's just, you know, they're not built to rear up. Uh, Maybe the female would kind of rear, just stand on her arm, or like, do a handstand. Arm. Oh, that's, there. that's a different character. <laughs> that's probably probably easier show. though. You... Yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, just when we're talking about sauropods rearing, it's like, that's that's always the first the thing. Plotikids, the Plotikids, I have no problem with the Plotikids rearing. That no, makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. Their center of gravity would be over their yeah. hips. For Brachiosaurus, it'd be... Yeah, the new the new big Torosaurus in Denmark. I mean, beautiful mount, but rearing with that ten foot long skull, <laughs> I just, I just don't want to. The guy, yeah. they're not going to be rearing. Yeah. Brachiosaurus kind of head. already built in a rearing pose, right? I mean, yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah, his they, arms they, are longer they, than his legs. Yeah, they basically they're high feeders, and they've adapted themselves to it. The platypus and grazers, but they're hedging their bets. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so in a crunch, they can reach into a tree. What do you think about titanosaurs? Could they rear? I don't think Just so. Just first thought, really? Yeah, I don't think so. Huh. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, they're very brachiosaur built like. I mean, yeah. they really are. And their size, I think in a lot of cases, what they do is they knock trees over. Yeah, just yeah. shoulder them over, yeah. like shoulder check? Yeah, and brachiosaurs yeah. too. Yeah. They're, you know, they're awesome, huge animals. I mean, yeah. No doubt. I mean, Utah's biggest dinosaur is a, is a titanosaur. Would that be Alamosaurus? Alamosaurus. Really? Yeah. There's good evidence they get pretty close to Argentinosaurus. It's close, mm -hmm. You know, those yeah, shoot. big, big titanosaurs, you know, they're all in the same guild of bigness, you yeah. know. And they might what be is like, the biggest one? What is the, yeah. you know. You there know, might be like point. a ceiling there where they're all just kind of brushing their heads up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, maximum okay. size that you uh, can be as a land animal. But yeah, an Alamosaurus is bigger than Brachiosaurus. But <laughs> a good chunk. Yeah, for a long, long time, Brachiosaurus was always the oldest, the, oh, the yeah. largest of the dinosaurs. For like maybe most of the 20th century. Yeah, I mean, Titanosaurus, to, you know, fairly recently. Mm -hmm. Pretty scrappy. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have a head until so, yeah, like 30 years that ago. Guy, probably stick that up the side, right? Now, like where you've got that on that lower rod? Oh, yeah. yeah. There, I would just kind of push, kill this back up like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so you get you can trap that little lip there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get it to the bottom of that little vertical face, but yeah. Ironbark says, could listen to Jim talk all day. You know, often we do, Ironbark. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. And Don has been doing this for 20 some years. <laughs> and you can just see the way his eyes spin. You think you could have. Uh... <laughs> nice. I've never got a story no. before. I always said if I could remember everything that Jim told me, I'd be really, really smart. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and 
Nolo. Yeah, melanosomes are just color cells in general, Nolo, I think. Well, they're, they're like keratin particulates. I mean, I'm no expert. Uh -huh. But uh, in certain feathers, you know, are, are real, the shape interacting with the light yeah. makes the color. Uh huh. Yeah, so there's just particles of the way the keratin is forming in the feathers. Uh, certainly not my area of expertise. Definitely not mine either. Yes. Yeah. You know, bacteria that we've been finding aren't my area of expertise either. And I <laughs> hope Ed and his colleagues will write up a note on it. Uh -huh. You can't do much taxonomy on little black, flat, and ampule like things. <laughs> I mean, you, you've seen the, uh, that Cetacosaurus, or uh, no, is the Sinus Raptorix paper where they they say they found counter shading because of the patterns of the melanosomes. Yeah. And then like stripes on the tail. Well, and you just look flat out at uh, Sinus Raptorix. Yeah, it's like you know, it's tail striped. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay. Now these are, and they have color vision. I mean, uh -huh. No question. Dinosaurs had color vision. Oh, yeah. You know, and see more colors than Colors leaves, are sure. going to be used in their, their lives. It's just where birds got their incredible color vision. Yep, and heck, fishes have color vision. Yeah. Part of why surface fish have pretty shapes and forms and colors. Yeah. And dinosaur Dave, I don't know if Patagotitan is the biggest dinosaur in the world. I know it often gets heralded as such, but it's probably the lar one of the largest, almost complete sauropods yeah. we have. Largest individual, you know, or among the largest individuals. For yeah. Sure. Well, Those they, individuals, we, you know, some of these, we really don't know their growth history. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. With, um, probably are growing think, a bit through their whole life. You yeah. Know, stopping. I think, um, there were three specimens in, in that original quarry. I think they still might have three. Mm -hmm. And then for, like, Dreadnoughtus, which is also really big, yeah. I think they've got, what, one specimen for that? But it's even more complete. Or no, if anybody I goes and looks at the one, the Alamosaurus Mount at the Perot Museum uh -huh. in Dallas, next to that Tyrannosaurus that barely comes up to its shoulder. <laughs> Any dinosaur that makes Tyrannosaurus look small is yeah. uh, going to be pretty big. Yeah, shoot, uh, I think Denver, Fowler, and Bob Sullivan dug up that cervical vert from an uh, Argentinosaurus down in New Mexico, and that's... I mean an Alamosaurus. What's that? An Alamosaurus. Alamosaurus, yeah. Yeah, you said Argentinosaurus. Oh, did I? You oh, did. shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that would be quite the discovery. Yeah, it would. No, um, like, yeah, I would have heard about that. Yeah, the, and that's one of the biggest sauropod cervical verts anywhere, I think. Yeah. Now, these are huge animals. I know the L.A. County Museum uh -huh. has been pulling out a gigantic animal. Ooh. Yeah, and down San Juan Basin. Uh-huh. Uh, Luis Chape and his team and, you know, every... Every cervical vert needs to be helicoptered out. Jeez. They're just, you know, they hike in a mile and a half to this thing. That's insane. And it's monstrous. Uh -huh. like, you know, it's going to take them a few more years because it is huge. Uh, and it'll be impressive because they will put it on exhibit that eventually in Los, Al Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee it. They, there's some big donors that have been real helpful. <laughs> yeah. And Nebulous Quiet, I'm sorry I missed your question, chat moves pretty fast. Um, you don't look around every once in a while, you might miss it. <laughs> Which I often do. He wants to dig. <laughs> wants to do both. Yeah. You need it on your glasses. When I watched it at home, I saw that chat go by, I'm like, how the heck does he do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mostly don't. He misses a lot of it, because when oh, yeah. I watched it before I came out here, it's like, you know, I want to yell out answers. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those guys go, oh, that was a good question. Boy, that just went by. No one noticed it. Uh, oh, there we go. There's the question. Thank you, Lenina and Jody Fish, for reposting it. Do you think it's possible that humans will be extinct way in the future? Yes. Some other species will dig up our bones to study us. Maybe not the second part. But... Yeah, maybe not dig our, bo our bones to study us, but maybe to eat the bones? No. I could see raccoons doing that. Or, Who cares? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But could we go extinct? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but we would do it to ourselves. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason there, you know, that we would have to, but you know, we're, we're, there is a way. <laughs> That's the thing I often bring up, like, people will ask me, Danny, do you think, if we had the technology, could we, uh, like, should we bring dinosaurs back, like, at Jurassic Park, like, in the distant future? And I, I usually say, well, if we have that kind of technology, 
then hopefully that means that we've kind of figured other things out in society and we're living in kind of a Star Trek type future rather than like a Mad Max type yeah, future. Yeah, that's my line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I okay. say that all the time, yeah. Nice. What do you want? The Star Trek future or the Mad Max future? <laughs> I may have gotten that from you, Jim. Yeah, yeah shoot. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So if we're living in a Star Trek future, then why not throw in some dinosaurs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sadly, it will be after uh, I get my time machine going. <laughs> but I think we're going to learn a lot more about them than they used to think was at all possible. Oh, about dinosaurs in general? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, shoot, we already are. I know, it's amazing. These are the good old days. <laughs> Dude, when I was a kid, all the books would say, like, oh, we'll never know what color dinosaurs were, so yeah. just empty out the whole crayon box. Uh, go nuts. And now we're actually starting to hopefully figure it out for a few of them. You know, that's that's pretty wild. Uh, no, it really is. It's, uh, it, it's exciting stuff. You got really good telescopes, fast and light travel. <laughs> look way out and look back and see them. <laughs> uh, Great Sag wants to know which plant or plants contributed the most to dinosaur mass at the time. So, like, you mean which plants were dinosaurs eating in order to get large? You know, talking about like sauropods? Out here? Yeah, what yeah. about here? Con conifers and Jurassic as well. Uh -huh. Conifers, ferns, you know, tree ferns included. Yeah, because these rocks are actually older than flowering plants. We don't have any flowering plants um, at, at this all. time in Earth history. Hadn't evolved yeah. yet. Yeah, wouldn't for another about 25 million years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. people think Cretaceous. Something flowering like plants. Oh, there we go. Cretaceous. Yeah, thank you, Fisher. Lovely. What's that? Piece of uh, Tempskia right here. Oh. Let me show the camera. Thanks, Fisher. Yeah, so this, you can see the interior right there. This is a piece of a Tempskia type plant. I'm sure it's not it, it's Tempskia a, a proper, type but. Of fern. Yeah, yeah, type of fern. Probably not, because otherwise, Tempskia is an individual genus of plant, one for about 50 million years. <laughs> you know, they're best known from the base of the upper Cretaceous and the mm -hmm. top of the early Cretaceous. These are the oldest ones in the world on this site, actually. Huh. It's probably not common for a plant genus to last 50 million years, right? Yeah, but they're in that group of things. Yeah. Like these plants, and they're probably... Some root right there. ...in ancestral form, which is neat. We need more paleobotanists! Yeah. Thanks, It's been lying in the spoils peat heap yeah, yeah. for weeks now. Ah, I'm surprised it's nothing tossed. That's a good yeah, thing. It's kind of nice to look at, so... Yeah, let me bring the camera up close over here, because we've got what looks like a bit of rib coming out, and I want to show how we like remove the rock from something like this, if you can see up close. Yeah. There, let me show you, chat. All right, there's the bone right down there. Is that one new, or is that the one that I found a couple days ago? That's the one you found a couple days ago, yeah. So, I'll just put this right here. You know, did we jacket that little Tenskia? The one that was that? over there? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's still there. I don't think I killed it yet. Yeah, it should be jacketed. I was working on the bottom of the bone. I know, but it's just important. Some people born for it. <laughs> well, we don't care about those. Sorry, chat. I can give you motion sickness there. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, paleo botanically, it's not a plant. All right. Throw away the fish. Throw away the fish.
There we now, go. Now, one of the things that kind of drives me nuts in here is sometimes you get into some layers that look like ash. I mean, mm -hmm. just like, man, that looks like some ice right. All right, so right here is what looks like a little bit of rib, and there is a piece of rock right here that was on top of it. So this got pulled up, and then bow, there's some bone right there. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, first you make sure you've got the area all nice and clean, and then you apply some glue to this. This has already been glued, but I'll make sure that I've got some glue handy for when we uncover more of it. Because this has been in the ground for 140 million years, and uh, yeah, it's not always the happiest when it gets exposed to the air. So the way that this works is, we want to work with the rock. So there will be natural fractures here in the mudstone, and you want to use those to your advantage. And so there's one right there. Yep, oh, and there's the extent of our bone. It stops right here. See that? Get that nice and clean. And then, this is making me a little nervous. I'm gonna remove this too to give myself some breathing room. Oh, an old hickory would really to get there. <laughs> well, I've got the, you know, the all. Yeah. A little fat. <laughs> Yeah. Like, the finer the point, the better. I mean, I was going to oh, sharpen this earlier, point on but it. you guys had your uh, had your meeting. I didn't want to be, you know, doing the screech yeah, machine while you're. Uh, let's see. I'm frozen. Heck yeah, there you go. You are on Twitch, upside down, but nevertheless. I appreciate it. I was also trained on different tools, so I've got different muscle memory, different way of doing things sometimes. Sometimes. That's why we that's why we call it learning. That's not real Creek doesn't count. Recent stuff. That's overburden. Less than half as old as this. I guarantee you hitting an old hickory is exactly the same as hitting a I am going to want to sharpen this. It's getting kind of dull here. Yeah, Not as sharp as I would like. Cool. Uh, and thank you, Dinosaur Day, for the gifts up there. I appreciate that very much. Got some breathing room now. With that piece up oh, and there is the end of our bone. So yeah, it's really short here. And, and what would you make of that, Don? It doesn't really. You know, there's potentially could be skull. It's got that prong at the end. Comes off at a right angle there. What do you make of that? 
glue on it. Uh oh. That's kind of neat. Yeah. It's a fun one. Anytime we get like a weird spindly bone like this, first thought is always, oh, it's part of the skull. So that's what we want it to be. Skull bones are usually the most diagnostic, most scientifically important bones of a dinosaur you can find. Most bones start as a skull <laughs> until proven otherwise. <laughs> so generally, they're proven otherwise. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but before it was my switch. And, oh, and Doc Aeolian says, can I get a piece of the sediment adjacent to the bone looking for microbes? Cheers, Ed Simpson. That is possible. Yeah? Yeah, we can, uh, we can definitely do that for you, Ed. Um, did uh, Maddie send them the group photo that we took? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did Maddie send you the uh, our group photo? Hopefully. Yeah. If not, we'll, you know. If not, we'll, yeah, we'll make sure you get it. <laughs> uh, nonchalant skeleton says, what are you putting on it? We're putting on polyvinyl acetate glue, which I can talk about in a bit. Actually, Oops, sorry. Really, Try and keep this off. Really, it's really thick. It's all the bones. It is a great glue. Actually, I think it's some... Well, that is interesting, yeah. It's weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that ended up... Yeah, that was some really thick glue, wasn't it? It's supposed to be really thin. That's what it says. In there, but... Yeah. Hmm? The weirder, the better. Yeah. Shoot. You know yeah. What it is? Get in the lab. And it could have been. Sometimes those bottles get mixed up. Yeah. yeah, this is fairly thick, I guess. Yeah. But they've been sitting out for a while. Mm-hmm. I'll hit it with a little thin. Yeah. Don, would you like to explain what kind of glue this is and why it's important? Yeah, so it's an acetone based. I think the PVA is the polyvinyl acetate. This is some sort of ethyl acrylate. Oh, really? Acrylate. acrylate is different? Yeah, it's different. I didn't realize that. Shoot. And then. Uh, it's Divinac. And the. Um, the Brits call it paraloid. Hmm. Yeah, we've been using it for like 20 years. Uh huh. Some people have their preferences, but. So yeah, essentially it's a little um, plastic, essentially, that mm -hmm. we use the uh, acetone to uh, dissolve it in, and then as the acetone evaporates, it leaves behind uh, the consolidation of the, the plastic. The nice thing about it is that it's reversible, so mm -hmm. when, we get back to the, when we get back to the lab and we need to, uh, to mess with it, we can just dissolve it with more acetone. Right. And yeah, we do undo anything if we need to. And then to. we do have some thicker stuff that we use as an actual like adhesive. Mm -hmm. So this would be a consolidant, and then if we used it to glue two pieces together, you'd call that an adhesive. Yeah. And the same thing, it's nice to be able to put it together out here if we need to, but if we get back and you realize it wasn't quite right, it's, yep. it's good to be able to undo that. Is kind of the key for that. Yeah. Yeah, these bones are punky enough that if you didn't. If you didn't consolidate them, they would just fall apart as you tried to collect them. So, yep. You know, some of them are solid enough that you probably could almost collect. Then you know, sometimes when they get on the surface and they've weathered for a while, they actually do get more solid. Mm -hmm. so occasionally, you can just oh, there's a nice bone on the surface. <laughs> that's usually how we discover new sites: is you end up getting lucky and finding some bone on the surface that's not completely exploded into dust. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll leave that there for a while as it sets up, and I'll uh, keep on digging over here. Let's move our camera again.
little tiny you know, chisel structure and Gaston quarry, which that was a cool choice. You can still buy those. I mean, they have them on Amazon. Yeah, it's, it's just, you know, it's a really nice deal. Or the piano wire. Oh, piano wire is wonderful. We had a guy that, you know, was in special effects and make us all piano wire. Uh-huh. You know, the heavy, you know, the heavier wire, you know, piano strings. And those things weigh their spirally down. Uh-huh. Incredibly good. Huh. You know, right, you know, for a needle to work on the Brilliant. I miss that. I have actually one of my desk in my office. And it's yeah. It's only on the left. It's like, I'm not breaking that out. <laughs> I used to have like 30 or 40 of them and they slowly wandered off over the years. <laughs> yeah. show Jim right now. Your uh, miniature Lego Gastonia has been designed, Jim. Pretty simple, but... Yeah, pretty hard to do the plates on the tail. Chainsaw blade on a, on a you know, stick is how I turn yeah. the tail. Uh, reach in there and you're done for. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, thank you, Dinosaur Dave. That's pretty cool. You need this back, you good? Now, let me show. Let me show chat. Right there. Very nice. Yeah. Simple little model. But uh, I like the coloring on it. That's really cool. Closer, Don. I know. <laughs> I like yeah. when I just scoop and go, boom. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of could right behind you. Yeah, I know, but I'm actually build up that berm. I'm digging into the spoils pile here to get around this fossil. So yeah. I certainly don't want to sliding down into the. But I'm trying to clear. Make sure you really huck it. Bounce it back. Here and you haven't actually yeah no I've had I've had extraordinary luck here of just having the bone under the fracture perfectly and I really haven't well, shunned it anything in general it's gonna break around the bone and, uh, yeah no this is a good area no doubt.
And Zul, what a great name you have, by the way. Zul says, are those piles of dirt to the side what the crew moved away? They are indeed, yeah. <laughs> Call that the talus pile or the scree pile or... Yeah. Uh, why do we want to have our own little camp bobcat to move them around? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Well, yeah, give it a Anybody got an extra yeah. bobcat? <laughs> we would certainly accept the... Uh, can we accept donation of a bobcat? <laughs> you know, I, I think we probably could, because we got yeah. a donation of a trailer. Okay. Yeah. That's a bobcat the tractor, not the feline. Yeah. yeah. To be clear. <laughs> but those sharp paws might be really good. Uh, you know, clean In between the mudstones? Yeah, maybe let that sit for a second. Yeah. Just to kind of you try to work on it so you see. Yeah, I don't know if we actually need a whole bobcat. We just need a rent from to bring it out here. Also, not the gold plate. Thank you, Tractor. Yeah. Sit around most of the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it'd be nice to have, like, a U Pop one job to do. If anybody wants to buy a bobcat tractor for the Utah Friends of Paleontology, that would be uh, be very kind. <laughs> Again, the bobcat tractor, not yeah, because I you know you don't license them individually; they go on trailers, so they won't have to worry about that. Got twenty thousand dollars laying around. <laughs> I'll use one. You can get a perfectly good for what we do. Oh, yeah. Perfectly good thing for a lot of people to not use. Number of people, the, the commercial guys all have their own bobcat. <laughs> They're better equipped than the slowly scientists. Yeah, they get money for their. Yeah. <laughs> Should make a really high speed bobcat so you don't need a trailer for it. Just yeah. drive it from Salt Lake on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> we have enough trouble with ATVs driving around the streets of these towns out here. <laughs> No offense to you ATV drivers. <laughs> We're getting those in Oakland now, too. Yeah. Like oh, kids on dirt bikes and stuff. Like They drive them all over the streets in my neighborhood. It's just, oh, give us a Yeah. And I think actually Utah's actually made a special law to allow it. Oh, really? Within certain bounds, yeah. Some of the side Yeah, license. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. legal. The canal's not too far from my house. and. That's just like an ATV trail. Oh. oh, and Lenina's got a question for us. I hope this is okay to talk about. Is it in Utah that you can't get volunteer helicopter pilots for fossil transport? I think she means like... The oh, that's really more National nationally. Guard. It's, that's nationally? Yeah, it's pretty hard. I mean, it's well through the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, heavy, you know, because we generally need a heavy lift copter. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were working on the Washington Monument rehab, not what, the Capitol Dome rehab. In D.C.? In D.C. Some helicopter pilot uh, looking up there, and they were using a helicopter, you know, military copter, to put the statue back on the top of it. Uh-huh. And they sued that they were taking the, the bread out of my children's mouth, but not having private contractors. So it has become almost impossible. We used to always have the military help us out, is it? Yeah. As like a field exercise. You know, we have to go find a remote area. We have to lift and move a big mobile object. Uh -huh. Yeah, military does that kind of thing all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the job. So a lot of National Guards, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a good training mission. Uh -huh. And help us. But now we're not allowed to do that, yeah. even when they want to. Because we're taking the food out of private contractors' mouths. Yep. But we don't have the money to buy higher you know we're we're looking uh at the utah raptor block yep. helicopter uh-huh pay for it thirty thousand dollars an hour yep. for a heavy lift copter yeah you know you know if the military's like we're gonna do an exercise that we would do anyway with a bunch of plates mm -hmm. you know so there's no difference we are gonna do it um, it's, it's sad yep. it really is it's like we don't you know you the public thinks we have money <laughs> yeah <I> mean, it's <laughs> like, you know, I was like, man, you just took away one of our, our most important things that 
because I've been involved with airlifts and mm -hmm. me too. Yeah, oh, they're, man, great. they're priceless. <laughs> there's so stuff nice that would still be out there if we didn't have it. Yeah. Sometimes things are just too remote or too heavy, or the terrain is too steep to to move it by any other means. You have to have an airlift. That yeah, was the Forest Service that looked at the, the uh, Diablo Ceratops stuff. Okay. They were doing some uh, some work down Grand Staircase. And the Forest Service has a helicopter? Had a window, you know, because uh -huh. it's for firefighting and things. Oh, yeah, nice. So they were not under the same mandate, uh -huh. but they can't lift things as big as the Utah Rapids. Wow. That's ridiculous that government can't use government helicopters to do government work. They have to contract it out to a private. It's like, yeah. what's next? Like, oh, we don't want the military fighting our wars for us. You know, it's taking private food out contract. of the private contractor's kids' mouths. Blackwater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in some not. ways, that's it's looked at that way. Like to go, yeah. Yeah. Especially the one, though. Uh, we're not going to get too political here, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is sad because yeah. I've I've had the head of Utah Air National Guard just really tell me he wanted to do it, and it was mm -hmm. just they got nope, they're, they're not going to let us do it. Yeah. Well, what kind of helicopter did the Forest Service have? They're, they're pretty big, heavy lift cops. They use them in firefighting. So right. they're ones that come out and they can go yeah. over a lake and take up a giant tank of water. Is it the dual rotor one or like a Chinook? No, they, they have a single rotor, pretty heavy, like Cobra size. I'm no expert on all the mates, but yeah. you know, pretty major. Nice. You know. Yeah, when they did Diablo, they did like eight other jobs that day. They were like moving some picnic tables. They were you know, uh -huh. you know, doing a bunch of different stuff. So they just fly to ours and yeah land and drop their person off and then it's they the cargo up, nets. hooked up the cargo net and then they dropped it on the truck and then they went back and picked up their person and uh -huh. went off to the next to the next Doesn't take them long. <laughs> yeah, we moved to Old Stegosaur once in western Colorado uh -huh. and they had two helicopters come out for that job. Uh -huh. And they, you know, we had some big jackets, like a sort of not little, you know, we had it in sections, you know, legs and big, the big plate areas and things. Uh -huh. But we had between, in three hours, once the helicopter showed up, the blocks were being wheeled into the museum prep area. That's incredible. That's three awesome. hours. Yeah. And from, you know, an area that could take us an hour and a half to get to. Uh -huh. I mean, I mean, they, they, their only slow up was us getting to the receiving end. Mm -hmm. You know, to get it set up on a flatbed truck properly. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, they would have been out of there hours earlier. You know, uh -huh. we had a, you know, it was a mile and a half, two mile hike. I remember uh, Denver Fowler daydreaming out loud about buying a Zeppelin. And <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Just... no, I do that too. <laughs> yeah. No, little per personal Zeppelins so you can work on cliffs and, and places <laughs> where they don't want you to drive a motorized vehicle. Right. Float over it. Oh, and also use it for lifting jackets and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we prefer to call them dirigibles. <laughs> Rigid airships. What could go wrong? <laughs> Depends on what kind of gas you use. Yeah, <laughs> helium versus hydrogen. Oh, humanity. Yeah. And Alex says, do you think dinosaurs could travel from Montana to Wyoming or Wyoming to Montana? I mean... They do. They do today, yeah. Modern birds do all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Our, one North Pole, South Pole. Yeah. <laughs> but Mesozoic dinosaurs... No, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, they're... Mo most did not come to Utah, though. Yeah, huh. You know, but the Morrison dinosaurs, we know, mm -hmm. occur down here and go all the way up into Montana. Both of them, there's different stacks up there, too. Yeah. So that'd be like Morrison dinosaurs, like Allosaurus, Diplodocus, mm -hmm. Stegosaurus, etc. Well, yeah, the Cretaceous ones, you know, surprising, you know, how limited their ranges are. One of the real interesting problems we have in our science in, in this part of the world right now. Do we actually have evidence for the those proposed mountains that would be causing that endemism? Oh, yeah. We do? And it's not the only thing, plants, too. There's also a paleofloral shift right at the same area. Hmm. So they're pretty coincidental. Uh -huh. And also that, that bend in the coast of the sea, you know, changed ocean current patterns. And, yeah. and maybe a, a major temperature 
rainfall thing. I mean, there's a lot we have to learn. Let me show chat what you mean by that, because I've got a little chart with the Western Interior Seaway on here. Yeah, I'm not sure it's that accurate, but... Yeah, it's one of Ron Blakey's, but it's... Yeah, uh, let's see, I might have looked at it. Yeah? Because Ron had me go over all of his maps uh -huh. uh, at one point. Hang on, chat. I'll show you in a minute. I think it's kind of a generalized one spanning like 5 million years or more. Yeah, Campanian but he's, he's going 70.4 mega amps. So he's trying to follow one ammonite zone, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, did have it stop before going to through Texas? I doubt it, seriously. Really? Yeah, I, I, they would still be split in front of At this particular Yeah, that's moment. right at the campanian Mascriptian boundary. Huh. I would think it would still go across Texas at that point. Huh. Uh, Ron, Ron, you know, Ron is more, you know, permo-triassic guy, you know. Really? That's why he sends all this stuff to me, and I don't know, what, what's the date on this one? I don't, I don't know, know if it has a copyright date. Yeah. But it's the current one on his website right now. I like it. I like the Beremian one. Yeah. You know, like that's say, what I got for How it. far to the sea for Utah Raptor? Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah. Pretty Let's far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty far. But uh, at this point, hey, I would, I would, I would say it was there was ocean across the Texas. I mean, I think I could prove it. And give you a couple of books, you know, oh, huh, open and. No. Show you the stratigraphy and just yeah. say, yeah, yeah that's prescriptive. Yeah, I think so. Right up until the yeah, boundary. Play. Yeah, it goes yeah, right up to Texas. I work on a tidal wave because it's in Central Texas. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but you have to camp play. I, I just don't know evidence of that blocking. And of course, I think the seaway uh -huh. retreated off the outcrop belt. I think it was there during the KT boundary. Uh -huh. And we've published on that. Uh -huh. And that Hell Creek volume that GSA did. Uh -huh. Uh, and I do because we have rockish water stuff at the end of the Cretaceous, like right there. Yeah. You know, in the, in the middle of the Hell Creek. But this is before the Cannonball Sea. Yeah, yeah, that's Paleocene. And, yeah. And that is that's, probably is that the sea just expanded event? over. It's just sea level rise, sea level falls. Okay. So. Yeah. And in my mind, the, the Cannonball is just the seaway rising again uh -huh. and spreading westward to where there's the outcrop belt. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I really do. I think the seaway was there, huh. and it make and, you know when they talk about the uh, KT boundary stuff, you know, where they talk about the sea uh -huh. there, and then heck, you know, you're up at the end of maybe an embayment on the seaway. You know, the tidal wave could have bore right on right up there. <laughs> you know, that's my view. Uh huh. You know, Interesting. We need more detail because we lose the outcrop. Uh huh. You know, it's, it's like if you don't have an outcrop, <laughs> you know, zero data. Oh, well, it's got to be land. It doesn't have to be land. So this is what Jim's talking about here. So this is right at the very end of the Age of Dinosaurs, pretty much, like Campanian up through the Maastrichtian. So this is North America, and there used to be this shallow inland sea right here. Think about, it's almost like, um, I don't know, think about like the Caribbean or maybe the Mediterranean, something like that. Um, but yeah, and here is Utah right there. Yeah. So Jim's saying that basically the dinosaurs from down south in here are different from the dinosaurs up north. Um, yeah, there's Google, some controversy about that, but yeah. Google Elder and Kirkland, 1994. Yeah. Cretaceous uh, paleogeography of the southwestern United States. Okay. The Elder we and Kirkland, the, yeah. 1994. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember it was published in, but uh, yeah, we covered the whole right down through Texas. So yeah, that's yeah. You see, well, at least what we did with the date, the marine data we had. Uh huh. So Jim's saying that this should actually extend all the way down through here. It should just completely bisect yeah. North America. It's still at the very end of the Cretaceous. Because some people say that this kind of retreats, and like more of this is dry land, um, at the very end of the Cretaceous. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's just how I mean, science the data, works. Data like for the Maastrichtian does. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have evidence Tyrannosaurus rex making it to New Jersey. Uh huh. You know, right Do we really have enough exposures to say, though? Yeah, Ellisdale and those yeah. things, they're that age. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have evidence that stuff was walking across. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that site that uh, Ken Lacavera is uh, in charge of. You know, uh -huh. What is Rowan University? You know, they have that big paleo park, you know, KT Boundary Paleo Park. On the East Coast? On, yeah, New Jersey. Wow. Yeah, they, they, huh. down there, they built a huge institute museum on it. And I didn't know we had the boundary out there. Oh, yeah. That's it's, cool. It's probably all glockenite like remnants of the tidal wave up there, too. Uh-huh. 
uh, but not as well defined. Uh, but that's like late Maastrichtian. It's it's, cha- it's near shore marine, mm-hmm. but they have elements that are being you know terrestrial too washed in there. Yeah. Uh, now it's there's there's data to be found. It's just all that pesky plant cover. <laughs> right. Yeah, on the east coast, not a lot of uh, not a lot of outcrop up there. Yeah. Guys, I'm name of it. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm all, I'm in, totally in favor of that stuff. Huh. You know, that park in Maryland, uh, Ogerson's you know, been working. That bone bed's really exciting. Like, I don't think they want to go after it like we would go after it because they, I think they wanted it as an attraction for many years. Mm, they're not but just going to dig it all up. I, I doubt it. Huh. I mean, I see a lot of us in the profession that go, go for it. <laughs> Right. But, you know, it, it becomes an attraction when you have a bone bed. Exactly. I mean, look at Dinosaur National Monument. Yeah. Like, shoot, and they went for it for a long time, and then later on they kind of backed off and said, let's keep these things in situ. Yeah, well, they, they couldn't do much more if they wanted to remove the face and remove it. Yeah. Now, the Chinese have one that goes for a kilometer under, with a roof over it. Holy cow. Yeah, it's yeah. late in the construction. Uh-huh. And literally, when you're in there, you look at the length of it, and they use trucks to drive one end to the other. You know, uh-huh. below. But it's, it's a dinosaur national monument times 100. It's like, and it's built at a big angle. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. I've got a lot of pictures of it. Uh-huh. Sometimes. What age is that? Well, uh, it's late Cretaceous. That's where they got that big tyrannosaur. Oh, uh, you, Zhu, Zhusheng Tyrannosaurus? Yeah. yeah. And that's where they got Sino, uh, uh, Ceratops. Sinoceratops. Yeah, Sinoceratops. Yeah. They got a gigantic Leptoceratops with a you know, lep- you know, skull like yeah. that. Like, wait, they got big? several of those skull like that. Holy cow. Oh, huge. It's, you know, late Cretaceous, much later. <laughs> but it's big. It's big as a sun Uh-huh. Like, that's awesome. Uh, really deep, still very short frill, almost no frill. Yeah. Giant beak. Huh. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they've got some reinforced shot fungosaurs. Uh, yeah. You know, tons of big giant edmontosaurs. And that has a connection Western North America. Yeah. Up on it clearly. Yep. Which is really neat. If you get the land bridge, you get the animals. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, you pay some fee. It's yeah. certain, absolute certain. The lance formation of Wyoming. Yeah, yeah and the Mesa Verde too, which is more dinosaur park. Of yeah, it shouldn't be called Mesa Verde. <laughs> but same age. Uh, 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 I mean, I guess we could we could argue whether it should be called Troodon or called something else, but that kind of dinosaur Troodontids are definitely in Wyoming. Yeah. I would bet Stenonicus is, is in the Mesa. I mean, they got teeth that yeah. identical. The ones in Wyoming and the Lance are what Crackadon, that's what Carpenter named them. And that's that, you know, the Hell Creek or you know, uh, Scholar you know, Truodon, which is a different type. So it's uh, Ricardo Estesia? No, no, that's my, I think that's a late surviving primitive one. Really? That's, that's how I take Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah. What was the other one that you mentioned? I didn't catch the name. It's uh, you know, a Prachodon with oh, a two pa- tax. Paranicodon? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, not yeah. Paranicodon. No? Prachodon, which is a Truodon to very large. The reason they call it, no, pe- no, what am I saying? Pectinodon. Pe- pe- Pectinodon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pectinodon, you know, it really is distinctive. Sonoticus got even bigger, you know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The tentacles on you know, the rear side of the Karen are amazing. Uh, but that's probably related to a different tax of uh, Hell Creek, you know. Hmm. Well, if it's only based on teeth, though, I mean, we yeah, know a number no, of There's no question it's a true odontic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. everybody, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, they've they got named, very distinctive teeth. Yeah, Cocapelia, yeah. named from Dinosaur National Monument uh -huh. as a Jurassic Truodontum. Who is this? Cocapelia. I'm not familiar with that one either. Shoot. Uh, yeah, how recently is that? Oh, named. Dan Cherry named it. Uh, one tooth. Oh, and, uh, right. Little thing, and it may be related to the Morrison Truodontoid. Aspororinitoides. Uh, yeah, yeah, but better to go with a skeleton than with a single tooth. Yeah, shoot. Yeah. Especially now that we're starting to realize that teeth change a lot in ontogeny in some of these groups also. Oh yeah, and they don't go as fast as the animal. Uh -huh. you know, from, so you can go all the way down to the Natarita right above our heads here. Mm -hmm. we got rich microfaunas and identify all the major groups we get in the Dinosaur Park. But that's all subfamily, you know, level. You know, sure. know they're there. We, you know, anybody trying to go farther than that, you know, is, is gleaming. <laughs> and I used to get in trouble with the mammal guys. Uh -huh. Like, Jim, how come you can't take this as species? <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaurs aren't like that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, well, I just I don't think I want to go there. Yeah. There's not a new unique tooth, and we take, yeah, but I don't want to name dinosaurs on teeth. Uh -huh. Sorry, Eric. Not a good idea. Not what I want to do. Yep. I don't want people talking bad about me when I'm dead and gone. I'm like an idiot. I'm going to do it. Let's see. Rose Sand says, do you remember a moment on a dig that randomly was hilarious for no reason? I mean, usually they're hilarious for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, not always reasons that we can talk about on a family show. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I know, it depends, you know. Uh -huh. I had a super blue bottle blow up in my face. Go, Danny, time. give this a try. That was entertaining. Okay. And it was fortunate I was wearing my glasses. Ouch. <laughs> Is that a cricket? Huh? Is that a cricket? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny for a reason, but. I know, it just feels like. Like I'm gonna well, bend yeah. it. Well, you're you're going too low there. Yeah, don't you know you're peeling off the top. You don't want to. Yeah, we're trying to do the top wall. I'm just uh, like testing it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, you don't want to break it. Let's see how it's, it's more of a less trying. Oh, that's why you call it old hickory. Yeah, because it's an old hickory. I didn't realize. <laughs> it's branded. <laughs> At least for the thin. Yeah, if you're doing heavier duty stuff, then all is better, but for the thin stuff. Yeah. They even gave you a special new one. Just to... well, I appreciate I that, Don. Thank you. A, I didn't want to give you a When it comes to the term rock, one. then most people consider <laughs> this stuff pretty marginal. <laughs> and then we have one, one of the Egyptian geologists comes up, he goes, look, I broke five ice picks this morning. And we're like, dude! <laughs> That's not a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so strong. Yeah. <laughs> I've destroyed the equipment. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, we did have that uh, ginger ale can that went off like a grenade the other day because it was, there was a little beam of sunlight hitting it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were just standing sound like a firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> Top of it just, yeah, exploded. exploded. Just, it's pretty dramatic. And it was because it was like halfway in direct sun. There was just a little bit of sunlight on the top. But it was so hot out, the thing just went off like a mortar. Yeah, we used to have glue bottles blow up at the gas and quarry. <laughs> From the heat? Sun, yeah. Yeah. Shoot up to, you know, just fountains of, of alkaloid. <laughs> just fountains. I mean, you have to, I mean, 10 foot streams. Uh huh. I had a super glue bottle blow up in my face there, too. You know, if I had glasses on, I would really would have burned my eyes. Uh. So my glasses coated, just glued all my hair to my forehead. <laughs> oh, my yeah. eyebrows were solid for a few days. And, <laughs> and what's amazing, it wiped right off my glasses lenses. Like, yeah. I thought, like, oh, I'm dead. I, you know, yeah, the acetone would eat away at the... No, yeah, I didn't use acetone. I just wiped them. And the super the coating on the glasses was such... But it didn't stick to it. Excellent. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. That's great. Unexpected. Oh, yeah. He's got a piece of old spinach. I flipped off a while ago. Man. I got some veggies. 
You're not coming by me. Alex says, could you guys tell me all the dinosaurs that are from Wyoming? <laughs> Google probably won't give me all of them. <laughs> we, we, we're not going to know that off the top of our heads. There's, yeah. there's quite a few. We, I'd have a try a hard time doing all the dinosaurs of Utah. Yeah. And this is my life. <laughs> I bet we could get 90% of them if we tried. I bet you we could if we wanted to spend like 20 minutes doing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no Triassic dinosaurs. No. They don't have any dinosaurs from the Chugwater? I don't think so. No, this Chugwater is pretty old. And they don't. Uh. Papoja, no. no. They don't have any kind of equivalents. They don't have any. Papoja, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so you really only have to go up to the Morrison, but uh -huh. I mean, they got so many oddballs now in Wyoming from the Morrison. Didn't you say there's a potential Miragaya or something? Yeah, like yeah, there's. Guy, uh, the Portuguese, the, the thing longus spinus, uh -huh. you know, Ken described as a genus, they've reassigned it to Marangaya. That's pretty wild, wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't agree with them, but, uh, I'm, you know, I don't consider myself the end all person <laughs> on that either. Anyway, there's a lot of dinosaurs from Wyoming, and we don't. And a lot of new ones. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot that may not be valid. But we're not going to express opinions too forcefully about stuff like that right now. With uh, 355 one. people watching. We have yeah. one of Wyoming's most famous dinosaur hunters right over there, too. We do, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Wyoming dinosaur on his shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's from, uh, from Fossil Butte. Fossil Butte, Butte. nice. Crocodilian. Yeah. Well, we, we do have several new dinosaurs from Wyoming that uh, Ethan's heading up that project there. And so Fisher and I were working with Ethan. Um, uh, Ethan waved at the camera so uh, our Wyoming dinosaur fans can, uh, can see who you are. <laughs> Opening a new frontier. Yeah, seriously. Like, no, no joke, no exaggeration. Ethan is doing some... Uh, pretty groundbreaking stuff up there in Wyoming. No <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Backbreaking and groundbreaking. Yeah, backbreaking. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that stuff looked pretty hard and nasty. We really had Luckily it easy. Not budget breaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to uh, a young streamer. Yeah. Shout out to uh, uh, Ninja. No, I don't know. I, I've like struggled to come up with another name of a, somebody who streams on Twitch. He's like big time. Well, we'll see when we prep it out, but I'm But yeah, Jimbo Slice One Up. Hey, thank you for being here. Good to see you. Whatever it is will be interesting. Lenina, thank you for reposting it from DD Alex. Do you know the lifespans of dinosaurs and how fast did they grow to their adult sizes? The, a lot of them grew pretty darn fast, but lifespan of dinosaurs, that's actually a trickier question. Generally on the scale of mammals, yeah. but big sauropods may be more on the scale of big tortoises. You think so? You think they'd be that old? Yeah, there's, there's some, you know, some people are saying that for the very biggest pet dinosaurs. Uh-huh. You know, they could be well over 100 years old. I think I remember Holly Woodward saying that she thought they'd max out around like 40 or 50. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think she's working with Titanosaurs, though. Huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's done I've a lot heard of work that with Titanosaurs. You have those super giants. Mm -hmm. But it seems a lot of dinosaurs kind of live fast and died young, like... Yeah, T-Rex, like 30s. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, man, Hadrosaur, most, yeah. Most, yeah, they're in mammalian yeah. framework. Yeah. Overall, you know, not quite the exact same. There's a general kind of, I don't know if you'd call it a rule, but a tendency in vertebrate animals where, like, the bigger they are, the older they can get, all other things being equal on average. But, yeah. There is, I, I guess I'm. Yeah. I'm I got it all out, but just Oh, nice. <laughs> My small thermopod, though. That's probably similar to the not to the quadrate. 
Well, I mean, we're only a few feet away, and it's. Or you think you think it's not range? Level, similar, uh, but it, it would help you know what element it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It looks strange. Yeah. That's Dude. exciting. Yeah. We want more theropod skull material from here. Oh yeah. I want to know who that animal is. Mm -hmm. That'll 100% be something it's, new. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the whole thing is, you know, we think at the end of the Morrison, end of the Upper Jurassic, and, and probably best to find in Europe, mm -hmm. because we're going right to the end of the Jurassic. We lose Megalosaurs as a group. Uh huh. We lose the uh, Ceratosaurs and the Allosaurids. Uh huh. You know, and they just get replaced by Cacarodonids and you know, Spinosaurs as a special offshoot of Megalosaurs. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, you know, that's the three big groups, and they go through the entire Upper Jurassic. Uh huh. You know, and then boom, they're gone. But, you know, what do we have here? We have a big meat eater. Is it a basal carcarodontic? Mm -hmm. I really want to know. <laughs> this paleontologist wants to know. It would be something <laughs> almost like uh, Acrocanthosaurus or something like that. Yeah, and it'd have, you know, it'd be. 30 million years older? Yeah, oh, shoot. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. It's like, it could be quite different, but... What's this? They're allosaurids. The Ovenators? I don't think they're in Yeah, they're... Yeah, they're good. It could be a Venetosaur. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of in Pacaradonosaur. You know, mm -hmm. But they're not allosaurids, you know, clearly. Allosaurids seem to go out. And, but if we find an allosaurid in here, we would say, no, they don't go out. Right, yeah. You know, it, that's it, it's important work here. Yeah. yeah. That's what science is all about. We want to know who this animal is and what it's related to. Oh, he likes his, he likes his broken off. What's up? <laughs> they also have to... The other one was bending too much, so I just wanted to... Different tools for different purposes. Yeah. And these, these flared rocks, like the first, you know, screwdrivers that are screwed, you know, chisel tips instead of the, the blade. Split the rock better instead of crush it. That's what I use an oyster knife for, yeah. 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 Don't have broken handles. I what, there was a tool that the uh, College East in Utah used to really push on us for Gaston Quarry. Uh huh. And man, we broke 20 or 30 of them. They're just <laughs> not the steel. The purpose. steel wasn't that good. Yeah. You know, it was just, you know, it looked good. It had a point. But uh huh. Man, it was not meant to be whaled into limestone. <laughs> Charlie's dragon. Yeah, that is attrition in, in young animals is a very, very real thing. So like the majority of dinosaurs that managed to hatch out of their eggs would not survive to adulthood. Oh yeah. I mean get us if you it, over after it where we're pretty comfortable with like thirty eggs. Uh-huh. You know, and, and things like Utah Raptor, if they you know, doing a similar number around, you know, 25, 30 or so. Uh huh. You know, each generation, you know, three years you have like almost a hundred young. Yeah. You know, and if a pair of animals replaces itself, that's two animals. Uh-huh. But most of those animals have to die. Yeah. Or they will eat themselves out of house and home anyway. Mm -hmm. and die. <laughs> you know, just, you can't sustain it. So you have to, you know, basically consider most of them cannon fodder. What do you, what do you think of the implication that if a lot of dinosaurs are having a lot of young, it might imply that, um... Okay. Yeah, this is basically what I've yeah. got here. Just yeah. Without a broken handle. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I still like it. I'm yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Um, anyway, you were asking a question. Yeah, the idea that um, if they're if they have a lot of young, it's more of an R strategy. So like it implies there's less parental investment just because there's mm -hmm. a greater quantity. Like I've. I've well, heard the, the thing with the Truodon stuff they're coming out with now, Rick, yep. you know, yeah. you know, with colonial nests. Uh huh. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah I'm I, waiting to learn more. Matt Wadel, I remember talking about how dinosaurs, uh, like sauropods and hadrosaurs, they may have had like 
kind of a mixture of R and K strategies where there's a lot of young but also a lot of investment in the young too. Like yeah. actually caring for the nest and looking after the young and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and you've, you've got to, you know, you got to look at those when they make their, those scrapes. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the nesting sites so great taking that hind leg yeah and just making this big sweeping depression uh -huh. and just making a line of eggs up it you know it's, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's pretty they're probably more on the r side but hadrosaurs like myasaura like it's like they had some serious parental care going on oh yeah which is odd for having oh, so many but eggs you, and the thing is you also have a, you know some serious predators oh yeah yeah you know i mean Good you've point. got you know it's it's a rough and tumble environment to live in mm -hmm. so you know if you just let them go on their own they probably would it probably be behaviors developed uh -huh. among some of those small nasty little carnivores like throw it on yeah where they would just stake out nests uh -huh. and if they're being left alone yeah you know, boom they would you know yeah i think guarding the young it's great i mean crocodilians do that mm -hmm. you know, yeah it's not you to know. mention modern birds. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, if they didn't, animals would develop behaviors like, yeah, here's a nice protein source that appears this time of year, and let's all get ready to munch down sea turtles like that. Yep. You know, I mean, the gulls just raiding them. If they didn't have a lot of young, I mean, most of them are dying before they get to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Then big fish are eating up another huge number that we don't witness. But then you might get a a particular year where. I don't know, maybe it's raining really hard during that or something, or the gulls are distracted and you get all of them making it. <laughs> yeah, but then the big fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. fish. We're not seeing that part of it, but uh -huh. little sea turtles paddling along near the surface. Oh, yeah, sure. Pretty yeah. attractive. But I, my and point the shells was aren't that, that hard. They're kind of rubbery. Yeah. You know, fish won't swallow them. But, you know, just, you know, nothing left. My point was, though, with like an R strategy like that, um, like you can get big population expo explosions all of a sudden where like, Maybe one year there's a big storm and like none of the eggs make it. And the next year the conditions are perfect and all of them make it. Oh yeah. Something well, close to it, you know? That's for any of the things, you know. Like, yeah. You know, I always talk about Utah Raptor. You know, bad year nobody makes it, mm -hmm. you know. Or a bad series of years and good year there's five or six make it. Says we had somebody wondering if there have been any teeth found at this site. Oh yeah, we got teeth. Yeah, we got teeth. Yeah. So I wrapped up a nice one earlier today. Oh nice. Yeah, guan it's beautiful guandong teeth. Yeah. Yeah, so teeth from our. You don't think it's beautiful? I found it with a nice pick, so it's like that. Oh okay. That's why you never use guys in the corner. The crown, the crown is. Yeah. Many pieces, oh yeah. Oh, so there's, for whoever is wondering, there's a bit. Of an iguanodont tooth right there, so you can actually see that smooth surface. Yeah, take one through, so. so this part right here is busted, and yep, there's the mark so of discovery right there. It looks like. In the, in the wash. But that's an iguanodont tooth, part of it at least. You know, on the way to camp. Yeah, did you um, see the name iguanodont means uh, yeah. iguana tooth, because uh, these teeth are not too different from like that of a uh, like a green iguana, you know. Iguana Iguana is this genus and species name. Yeah, I mean, looking along, yeah. there's, like, there's like ten little bones coming out of it. Yeah. Most of them are anyway. Yeah. yeah. But, Everybody you know, likes teeth. They're a very charismatic you know, part of the you're animal. That far away from this thing, you know, there yeah. may be a different uh, spectrum of things there. Oh, well, it's well worth somebody doing yeah, a test dig cool. there. Thanks, Don. Didn't People are pop, amazed by this. Didn't pop out as easily. Yeah, you can see some of the root on that side. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the crown is in a bunch of pieces here. Viewers love teeth. Yeah. Well, we got croc teeth and theropod teeth earlier in the season. Yeah, Fisher found a beautiful, probably dromaeosaur tooth, like rapper dinosaur tooth. Um. Yeah, I've got some photos of it. It's, yeah, I'm it's not gorgeous. quite sure looking at the identicals that it is. You don't know, you don't think it might be a drumius? Not, 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 not thrilled with it. It's not impossible that it's Yorgoguchi yeah. and Yorgoguchi teeth are different. Uh huh. Because it's so primitive. But, we're, uh, we're getting a couple raindrops right now. Fisher yeah. just pointed out, yeah. Well, it is 10 to 5. 10 to 5? Shoot. No way. It can't be. Time doesn't move forward like that. Yeah. Justin had a rough night, so he's yeah. ready to... Man, you can hear that rain. Yeah. 
It's my just gear is little it's just a little burger that's Hurry getting overly here. ambitious. <laughs> How serious is this gonna get? Not gonna get serious at all. With this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, our, it's our little portable swamp cooler. Bring the temperature down to make it more pleasant out yep. here. All right, as long as my gear doesn't get wet. Yeah, I don't think it'll do much. Oops, sorry. Get a lot more. Um, everything up there should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and dire beast rex. Yes, indeed, those pillows and knee pads are a useful thing out here. Yeah, these shale pieces can be pretty sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting you call them shale. Well, it's it breaks platy. Uh-huh. It's actually would be a like a shaley silty, mudstone. silty shale, you know. Yeah. It's not platy, but it's I, I refer to it in general as a mudstone. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, when I'm in marine rocks where the bedding is really good, uh -huh. I usually talk about this stuff as shale, silty shale, sandy shale, things like that. Because then when I think about shale, I think like connotation is kind of marine. Yeah, and it's usually in marine or lacustrine. Uh -huh. You know, flat bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Look at the bedding in here. Uh -huh. Some of this flatness is actually compactional, probably. Uh -huh. you know, so it's properly, you know, it's mudstone. Uh -huh. But some of it's like claystone, which is pure clay. Uh -huh. it's, I'm just looking at some and going, yeah, I should try to date this. Uh -huh. No, it's just more pure clay. Would we expect any of this to have zircons in it? Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, there's been a date done on this. Been a very preliminary and rough date of. Yeah, so they got like 132. Uh -huh. That was like almost, yeah, 15 years ago. Oh, shoot. Before we had Tim's or anything. Yeah, well, I think they had Tim's, but Tim's yeah, that project, they weren't using it. Yeah. What was that, Ethan? Is Tim's a new uh, technique? Yeah, it's, it's, got, it's not brand new, but it's, it's new and it's you know, very time consuming and precise work. Which, of course, makes less people do it, and the price to have someone do it goes up quite a bit. Mm. Yeah, I figure I'll just go around this and tomorrow, come out and map it, and put some caps on it. Uh, Parathetamol says, the idea of streaming this is absolutely brilliant. It shows a world which is closed for most people. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, yeah. Glad you appreciate that. And huge shout out to uh, to Jim and Don for putting up with me doing this, you know? Back to work, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think outreach is really, really important, and I'm, I'm really glad that they agree. Between the streaming and the improper tool use. <laughs> 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 You'll find it. Well, let's see. I'm a pretty nice journal. Yeah. And Phantom says, my new favorite stream. Thank you, Phantom. Appreciate that. Yeah. Those poor people tuning in daily. <laughs> Says glad Steam was showing a rerun of you playing the Dino Fossil game a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, Dinosaur Fossil. In it. I'd never have found you. Well, very cool. Yeah, I the developers of that game actually sent me a like a pre-release copy and asked me to stream it. I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, those of you who are not familiar with that, there's a game where it's basically like a dinosaur paleontologist simulator. 
Oh yeah, Justin knows, yeah. Um, it's a little goofy, but it's... I don't know. GPR. What's that? GPR. The GP, yeah, the ground penetrating radar. Hey. Um, yeah, and everyone is highly radioactive, too. Highly radioactive. <laughs> Perfectly contained in a boulder. Yeah. In dirt. I mean, shoot, how are you going to model this kind of excavation work, though, in a video? Like, I kind of get it on some level. You basically just got to play Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, I don't know, it makes me smile that, like, people think that our work is cool enough that they, like, want to make a video game simulator of it. Oh, yeah. When I was Dynamation, we did one. Yeah. Yeah. You had a dinosaur excavation oh, simulator? Oh, yeah. Dinosaur hunt. That was a star. Oh, cool. All you were a star then? I'd be driving up in my blazer and, and <laughs> skidding sideways and, and stepping out and going, and I'm looking for you to help me dig dinosaurs. <laughs> I had to do about 30 takes of that. You see, you did a commercial for it. Oh, yeah. We did, what is it called? Actually, we did New York it. for a big computer thing. Uh-huh. Copy World or something, New York City. Uh-huh. I had a table right next to Reggie Jackson signing his baseballs. He wouldn't sign my father-in-law's baseball unless I gave him 300 bucks or something. Jeez. <laughs> well, sorry. I only, I sign things for free. <laughs> You're not Reggie Jackson. I'm not Reggie Jackson. <laughs> well, I don't know who Reggie Jackson is, so I think you're doing pretty well, Jim. Uh, shoot, what was the game called again? Oh, I can't remember the exact name. I've got a copy of it. I, I've never been able to go through it so uh -huh. far. Because, shoot, if it's I don't available think it's a great anywhere, game. it's real old. On an emulator or something? Like, I need to play this on stream. I never play games on stream, hardly ever. But it was on the Commodore 360s. <laughs> Just about that. Uh, but it was, you know, this would have been in the mid 90s. <laughs> Commodore 64? They also, did, did, they a make they also did a space one in the oh, same yeah. series. Yeah. And I actually could, went through the space one. Uh huh. The dinosaur one was a lot trickier uh, barrier to get through at one point to get up mm. to the step. More difficult game. Well, it just probably when they were thinking out, okay, how did we do this stage? They came up with something that wasn't quite as engaging in my mind. Uh huh. Shoot, if anybody can find this game for me, anybody in chat, I will. Uh... The commercials will work. Yeah, uh, it's like a yeah, I want the commercial. Yeah, I think its subtitle was a Dynamation Adventure or something. <laughs> a Dynamation Adventure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a what was it? The uh, I'm not at just guess. <laughs> you know the the stereo glasses thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know you know ch -ch -ch, you know looking through. Oh, viewfinder. Yeah, viewfinder. This dinosaur one that I'm in. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I need it's to find It's actually that a too. pretty good shot, actually. Yeah. Because you know they want depth of field, so I'm uh -huh. working on this bone, and it's like going toward the camera, and <laughs> you know it's like yeah, that was, and they spent all day uh -huh. with me trying to get it, something that would be impressive in 3D. I mean, shoot, you only have like eight of those per re like real thing, so got to make sure you get it right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Is this a little possible? Yeah, I found a couple of fragments of myself that aren't really worth it. Let's see. I won't let, me, doubt it. let me get it together for you. Maddie, I think Maddie found this uh, a week ago or something. And uh, slipped our attention. It's it's the rain. How good is this mic? It can pick up that rain. Like Devil's that. Canyon, a dynamation hey, yeah, some. Oh, yeah. Devil's Canyon, a dinosaur, a dynamation adventure. Thank you. Murph found the same thing on here, yeah. There it is. Let's see. My game. Yeah, wow. How'd that pop down? Pretty good? Yeah. Nice. Oh, very cool. We're going to have to do this on stream at some point. Somebody look it up and see if it's on Twitch, like if that's a category on Twitch. Yeah, that's an obstacle. Of an, of an inky. Yeah. Wow, cool. Let's see. Is that from over there? Oh, from in situ. Yeah, see, it found see it. here's a piece Ooh. of one. You got one, too. Oh, yeah. You got them all over the place. Most of the time, they crumble when you don't just... Yeah. They bone junk. No need for them? Well... When you get whole ones, they're worth keeping, but they are scattered like the pebbles through this stuff. The tattoo you have to rescue is named Dr. Collected. Marshall Cope. I can need it. <laughs> you get a complete one, because you do get you know, whole ones pop out with one of them. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got bags of them from float, because they weather out yeah. on the ground. That's the best way for them to make it to the surface. It's downloadable. Yeah, Terry Toad, we're going to have to... But, Claire, it is in... It's, it's searchable on Twitch? Shoot, I'm going to have to play that when I get home at some point. Yeah. Stream that. Good luck. That's all I can say. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. 
Uh, but that's not my thing. I'm not a gamer. Oh, I'm not either. <laughs> I guess it all depends on what kind of tools they give you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the design. Like, There's no oyster sucker. I can't do this. <laughs> an oyster knife, Don. An oyster shucker. <laughs> you would say that, being from Massachusetts. An oyster shucker, I guess, is the person who's doing the shucker. An epileptic oyster shucker? Oyster oh, shucker. Better no. than being the shucky. Careful now. <laughs> yeah, we can't tell an oyster shucker joke. No, not family friendly. Should we pull it down? Yeah. I mean, it's not x-rayed, but... It's <laughs> great. Oh man, Jim, I can't wait to play that. That's gonna be so funny. I mean, that's like seriously ancient history. I mean, that is almost. Let's see. Yeah, that would have been probably like 90, 95 in there. Let's see. Beginning of the computer age. Yeah, that was like thirty years ago. Almost thirty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Attention Time Blazers, a personal message from Dynamation's renowned Utah Raptor expert, Dr. James Kirkland. <laughs> we invite you to blaze through time into the prehistoric world of, all caps, DINOSAURS! Cool. <laughs> this, this that would be nice. It probably would have been better if they worked with me a bit more than they did. Yeah. I mean, as a prop, that would be... Yeah. what you say? Hmm? Work with you more as far as what you should Designing say. it and... Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, they just kind of did it, what they think things should have been like. Yeah. You know, so I wasn't hugely impressed. But 1995. It's part of what covered my salary, you know. Is that, you know once people have to realize you, you need to justify your existence everywhere. <laughs> and whether it's teaching uh, gross anatomy to you know, be a paleontologist in a university, as the yeah. doctors need gross anatomy, or... <laughs> you know, doing paleo inventories in national parks, you, you've got to justify what you do so you get a paycheck. You know, teaching standard geology because uh, you want to dig dinosaurs. They generally don't pay you to dig dinosaurs very many places, sadly. And the, the game takes place in 2023? Is that right? Shoot. Nah, I bet it has something to do with when it was posted. Or... <laughs> Uh, they got they got a space age one too. Mm -hmm. That's actually better. <laughs> <laughs> At least in terms of the actual you know, gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Being somewhat rewarding. It's <laughs> it's not as punishing. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Shoot, I should play that game with uh, with Iris. That would be a fun joint stream. She's uh, she's really good at games. We could probably figure it out together. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I got a copy at home, but I don't think there's a computer around that runs it anymore. <laughs> it's pretty ancient. And the dawn of CD ROMs. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, if anybody can find that, the commercial for that that Jim is in. No, was it? Do they actually put footage of you in the game, or is it? It's just in the game. It's yeah. in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they also used it in some commercials early on. No, there's gonna. Oh shoot! Apparently, there's full playthroughs on YouTube. So. Oh yeah. The people in chat are saying. So there are people that figured out how to go for the step three. Oh, I'm was. sure. Yeah. I was just like, I can't get to this. It's not <laughs> worth my time. <laughs> I would rather be doing something else. Yeah. yeah. Too many real dinosaurs to wrap it Yeah. So what we usually do is like we would take out a roll and then fold it in half. But you know, way technology is today, you, you could do a pretty good game. You know, more close, much closer reality, I'm sure. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, SDP last year there was talk about like digitally exploring like the Karoo. Oh really? Looking at. Um, like outcrops and stuff. That's pretty cool. Like after it had been photogrammetrized or? Yeah, I've got like a QR code that's to it. Oh. So maybe I'll send that to you at some point. Yeah, that'd be cool, Fisher. Have you consider, you know, like what we have in Utah? Uh-huh. 
you know, like the, pretty much the complete record. Yeah. And you decide, you know, what love, you know, where are you going to go? We're going to go to Grand Staircase. Mm -hmm. and we're going to go out to Bears Ears, you know, with a triassic. Uh huh. You know, and, and, you know, you cover almost all the spectrum. Heck, going up to the Cambrian, we're going to look for soft body faunas. <laughs> you know, there's four different levels of producing. I mean, shoot, you could you could do something like that sure with uh, that. like Google Earth mm -hmm. VR. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be really cool to have like a a virtual field trip yeah. kind of thing. Oh yeah. There was a thing. It was like a, a carboniferous forest. Yeah. Type carboniferous forest simulator or something like oh, that. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Look at these roots. That sounds neat. That's fine. Yeah. Big nest of roots. I wonder if there's bone here. Check out uh, Hylonymus. I don't think they had any fauna in it. Oh. I think they were planning on it, but then they... Yeah, plants are easier to model. Yeah. <laughs> plants are easier to model? <laughs> Tell that to BBC and Discovery yeah. Channel. Yeah, or shoot, or the people who made um, Saurian, that game. Yeah. Where, like, the plants are the most time-consuming part of it, apparently. That's oh, like yeah, no, I've it's... I've working on for the last... Plants yeah. in a breeze have more moving parts than a dinosaur. <laughs> It makes sense, actually, when yeah. you think about it, yeah. I mean, human hair is tough, you know, uh -huh. feathers are tough when you have that. I mean, they're getting better at it, uh -huh. but another problem we have with Mesozoic plants is a lot of them, we don't know what they look like. Right. You know, well, we know what a branch looks like. Well, that's it, you know, the shape of a tree, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's all guesswork. I don't know when the story is supposed to have their T-Rex. Oh, update. make it playable? I don't know. Well, and they also redid the model. So they did, yeah. It's no longer it's feathered. Like, yeah. Currently, it's all feathered, fluffy and stuff. Which I like, you know? It's like, a good one. But also, it's the size of an elephant in a tropical-ish environment. Yeah. I just like that it, yeah, it's the skin, getting the, the idea out the there. The Tyrannosaur skin in North America, which is much warmer... You know, your Tyrannus is up in the mountain in a volcanic terrain, yeah. high elevation. If that is a Tyrannosaurid, like yeah. some people don't think it is. Yeah, well, it's it's still a big carnosaur, mm -hmm. you know, carnivorous animal, and uh, it's not likely a Manoraptoran. I mean, if it's a whole new group uh -huh. of large Manoraptorans, you know, that that's pretty interesting because the only group that there is is Tyrannosaurs. <laughs> you think this looks toothy, Doug? Just came out, and I've got the other piece of it still in situ. That pebble broken. I just want to be extra careful. Hmm. Yeah. Let's take a look. Could be a. Yeah, it might be just a broken pebble. I know. Okay. I find it interesting how the pebbles break in these, you know, like straight fractures. And that does look kind of interesting. Yeah. And you have the other part. It's, it's still in situ right here. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a tooth. That's no question. That's, that's bone. I mean, is it a tooth or something? Another weird thing. But that's bone, there's no, I have no question. Mm -hmm. And likely a tooth. So I would try to put it together and take yeah. it out. Cool. So can we redo a relay pass? Those long <laughs> arms of yours down. Yeah. Shot. So yeah. If you look at the texture. Yeah. Yeah, my hind lens might be a little yeah, more magnet than yours. Yeah, but it's definitely not. It's definitely not a pebble. Yeah. Put some glue on it. It's just a couple drops. You don't need much, but yep. yeah, a couple drops. It's a little fibrous looking, which is interesting. That radial fabric is. Do we have any super thin glue anywhere? Super yeah, thin. Okay. It's all uniform. Okay. This one might be pretty. Need super duper glue. Yeah, thinner the better. This is pretty thin. Okay. You know, because that looks like it could be a pretty good, I mean, it might be a sauropod, too. Ooh, that would be exciting. Yeah. yeah. Get them here. Nice guy. Nice and thin. Yeah, this is good. Thank you, Don. 
I'll take that. Oh, is he wrapping up that? Yeah. Bring it on over in the sticker. No, I'm looking at That might be a cardio down too. And Parathetamol says, what purpose does the glue serve here? It keeps the bone from exploding. And disintegrating. <laughs> yeah. The stuff's been in the ground for 140 million years, and when you expose it to the air by breaking rock around it, it's not always super happy. So the glue helps uh, you know, strengthen it. Yeah, sometimes you find your best bone in the hardest rocks. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are soft mudstones, so for some purposes, this is a pretty user-friendly quarry, but the, <laughs> you know, the difficulty is stabilize the bone. Where's that chin at? Chin? Yeah. Right here. Sharing it. Right. Let's get around this. Obvious, try to this out. Take a picture of it. The tweeter. This Sharpie sucks. Does anyone have a good Sharpie on this? Yeah, I do. I think I have one of the communal Sharpies I put in my tool bag. Sprinkles. Really just like a nice the so nice. No ends to it. Dire Beast Rex says, uh, how do you get started doing paleo field work? And is 30 too late to start? <laughs> yeah, no, we've got volunteers on this crew. Ken is going to be here in a few days. And Ken's what, like 34, 36, something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, um, for a bit. Yeah. Has brought some skills from that part of his life. There you go, yeah. Yeah, so for many people, you know, there are volunteer organizations uh -huh. associated with museums that have programs. Yep. That's how I got started with the uh, Museum of the Rockies. Mm -hmm. and we had volunteers in, you know, Museum of Western Colorado, Dynamation, we had volunteers. Uh, uh, Geologic Survey has volunteers, you, you know, all the museums out here do. There's, without volunteers, none of this would be possible. Right. You know, we get a few things, but, you know, it would be Don and I. And, and Ethan wouldn't have the years of experience leading up to being a part-time employee that we trust <laughs> to run the quarry. And those years of experience were all because he was a volunteer. Yes, you might tell folks, remind them, we've probably done this in the past, is uh -huh. to look at uh, Ethan's old uh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Living Past. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Ethan used to make uh, YouTube videos, so if you check out The Living Past on YouTube, you'll see some him wonderful there. shows. And there's a very good 30-minute one on us out here. 
I actually yeah. watched that yeah, last did. year before it came out. Yeah. I just did a, did a search for the site. It. Yeah, and then I found that. You did a great job. Our, our uh, media people are yeah, jealous. <laughs> I mean, they really are. They want to come out in, you know, uh, in a couple weeks when you come out and, I think as long and as start we, uh, putting together a more up-to-date oh, yeah. survey paleo video. That'd be cool. Actually, yeah, you know it's, it's needed. You know. Good for outreach. we got some good people. That just, there's a lot of, you know, they focus on the Great Lake. I mean, the Great Salt Lake drying up. And, mm -hmm. You know, some of the landslide problems and drought. You know, there's a lot of issues geologically that deserve coverage. So their um, hands are pretty full right now? Yeah, no, but no, they're ready to start doing some stuff with dinosaurs. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, you know, I think a lot of this was stimulated by MTE-14. Yeah. I really do. I think, nice. I think because so many... You know, they had it set up so anybody the survey could just watch talks, watch uh -huh. videos, and hear the sound. That's really cool. So there were a lot of people that were just tuning in and doing their work. Uh -huh. uh, and I didn't quite realize that. But you know, it was kind of the side perks they just you know, threw in. You and know. they're like, wow, this is really cool, actually. <laughs> There's some good talks. I'm interested in this one. <laughs> yeah, for those of you watching at home, we're talking about the, uh, the conference that Jim really made happen. Um, conference that I was at in uh, toward the beginning of June, the Mesozoic Terrestrial Ecosystems Conference, number 14. The abstract volume is online for free, and it's an extended abstract with pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Evan pictures. Yeah, seriously. One of the things I try to convince grad students is most of your published work is going to people are going to just look at the pictures. Yeah. You know? uh, and if you make good diagrams and good charts, good pictures of spectacular fossils, people may read about them. Start read the caption. I'm like, yeah, I got to dig into this. <laughs> but if it's just terse, you know, poorly illustrated, only yeah. the, the few people in the world that really care about your research are going to ever read it. I advise you. Learn how to take good pictures, do good figures. Showmanship is important in paleontology, obviously, <laughs> but any area of science or where we want to get information to people, showmanship, you know, out, it, outreach or in just the science. Yeah, absolutely. Really, you know, someone in Congress, when they're reading some paper on what the effects of an ice free Arctic, you know, you got to set up your graphics so it's very digestible. <laughs> Because even scientists that aren't in your discipline need that kind of help. <laughs> uh -huh. Some of us aren't so good at it. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely some people who could yeah, it's use just some, it uh, some practice in that department. this one inch 25.4 millimeter <laughs> yeah we use metric brushes around here too <laughs> <clears throat> we're using bilingual brushes it's got one inch and 2.5 
Nope, I can't. I'm in airplane mode. Amanda's got a new ankylosaur from somewhere in New Mexico. Oh. New is a new taxon or new specimen? New specimen. Cool. A lot of body and armor. I don't think it's got a head. Uh, it's, yeah. Who does? I think it's probably Notosaur, but we'll see. It needs more stuff. Amanda, the one that did the giant Taurosaurus and, and has bought out all the ranchers around the Zuni Basin, so there's no more ranches that have left scientists on. But she does good work and hopes to sell them to museums. Uh, I might actually need more than that for this. So Lindsay's been cut Thank out you, though. Yeah, for oh, private yeah, land. Here's the, here's the other one. I'll use this first. All right, first. Yeah. So thanks. this up before it decides to go anywhere. Yeah, there is BLM land, too. I know, I think she was a little bit depressed how I came out. It's like, you know, end of an era. It's, you know, the best bone, the Zuni Ceratops bone bed, which still has stuff and produce, you know, Nothronychus as well, is off limits to scientists now. Oh, really? Yeah. Shoot. The Kinley, the... Bobby McKinley passed away, and his his son or his the children have made a contract with her. Uh, She's paying him. Is she commercial or academic? Commercial. Mm. But someone that sells so far, she says, only to museums. Who's got say. the tape, measuring tape? The cranky, winky one? The one that cranks? Here. No, it's not that one. It's the one that I have it in my hand, Ethan. That's not, that's not, oh, it's not that it. rolls. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. It's up there, by Can you pass me that roll of tape, though, Fisher? Sweet. Thanks, Don. Behind you? Beautiful. Thank you. The lighting is awful. This thing looks a lot better, maybe, if I... Yeah. It's some glue on it, but it does. It just like a little while ago. It was somewhat visible. Blob. This is that, this, this rebar is... Uh, east west axis. Oh, no, this is. Uh, I mean, that's. A, sorry, but I'm going to say this is a mapping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes with that guy. Just doesn't have the. No, I think it's a tenor. Mm -hmm. so probably yeah. goes up more than It probably won't go across. Your area will probably go up there. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's down to east west because there's like a bunch of nails on the ground over here. Storm Guide says My wife walked by and saw what I, the stream that I'm watching, not hearing the audio. I thought I was watching a bunch of homeless people. <laughs> Only periodically. Jeez, not, okay. Not very far off. <laughs> you certainly dress like them. Uh, shoot, I can't say I haven't been there before, actually. But yeah. Don't make a lot of money in this field. Could be the new, uh, go out to a temple and film homeless people. So you got the other half of that tooth out? Yep. It's all, all right. wrapped up. Hey, uh, it's not totally you hammering and nails. Or you want to hold this right? Yeah, you are not. That is not the line, dude. Yeah, that's not even close. It's about slow. 45 yeah, degrees. Yeah, like over there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so this is 50, uh, 60, not, that's 55. So then it's says, a different it's nail. That right? should be that way. It's not a pretty well, that means package here, like but it'll do the job. Yeah. Here, I don't, I don't what know why there isn't a thing on that one. Yeah, what's it saying? What's what's the nail behind me? Say, is it behind me? I can see it. Yes. So I just need to get hooked into the one that's one north. So that's uh, that's 95 north. Okay. So yeah, I'm one. If you move this one to one meter that way, it'd be great. Uh, on nail, one meter north of the one I'm on. What do you think? But you're also. No. I don't think that's right. I know, I'm sure it's not right. <laughs> you want to go probably to these back here. Ninety eight. Ninety seven. Ninety six. Ninety five? So Ethan, ninety five's right here. Okay, great. Go underneath the tarp, yeah, probably. Well, is, is there not a 95 yeah. where Jim is, roughly? Should be just a tag behind me. So that one, you might, you might actually be too So this is... Does so, that look straight? Yeah, this totally is 95 yeah. north. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, back up. Just That's 95. You're in the way of the tape. You're, you're pushing out. Yeah, this is perfect. 
Alright, yeah, this is right at 10 meters. Oh, so I had a burger. Great. Lovely. Both pops. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. You got it? Uh, you just, yeah, you can bring it Make it a little tighter. Should a tooth get its own yeah, uh, okay. number on the map? Oh, yeah, Thanks. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. If it's a tooth work, you so That one is 56 north. Or 50, 95 north, rather. Yeah. No, even when we get isolated oh, osteoderms, we'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, I mean, we don't have to worry about being as ultra precise. Hey, can you, can you hold yeah. this up here for me, Justin? They're operating more like pebbles than, you know. Right, than anything yeah. like. But, who knows the future once we have hundreds of teeth no. plotted. Oh, I put it away. I see a pattern. Mm -hmm. oh, so it's in the mapping box. Okay. Can you just hold the top? Right uh, sort of the six is roughly over there. A little tight. So is there anything? Uh, it does look like a homeless encampment, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've got enough junk around for sure. Uh, no. Oh, this one isn't. Uh, That's a nice three east. Oh, this is 96. That's 95 north, correct? Right? Yeah. Two. Yes. So that is quite off. This, well, this one's off. Or you know what? This is a meter south. Because yeah. it, it was straight, but this is a meter north. This is 96 north. That's 95 north. That's odd. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay. Oh, that Unless, are we sure, that, the line was straight, but are we sure this is 95 north? Yeah, the big one, because that's exactly 10 meters, the big ones were the ones we should go off of. Okay, great. Those were put in more. Gotcha. Is 90 our highest number so far? Um, no, you look at the, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, yeah 90 is our highest number. Okay, so, just want to confirm. So you got another numbering system in here. We've, we've abandoned Gary's Island. Yeah, it's for, for Ethan's pond. It's Dubu. Oh, Jim, did we tell you we found the brown? Yeah, you mentioned that yeah. to me. Take care of it. So. Is that mine or is it the? I think it might be here, UGS. It? Yeah, because the UGS one was died. Does it got the loose? Uh, that's the UGS one. That's no, that's mine. Mine. The oh. one that's not loose is the US. The UGS. Oh, this one has your name on it. Oh, if it's got my name on it. I did not engrave my name on it. I mean, I wrote, I wrote it on there. Oh, point. well, yeah, no, mine hasn't my name engraved on it. Oh, okay. I don't my know dad that. did when he bought it for me 40 years ago. Like, this who made off with my brunt? Of course, now you can buy a knockoff brunt for like 80 bucks. Yeah, I just use that. I just... Wasn't something I'm going to be able to leave to my grandkids. Yeah, it's not really good. Yeah. I'll use sure, they're, they're not going to care. What is it? Critical tool to know. I don't need to geology. Pocket transit. I heard it's part of the city. You're going to map rocks, you need one. All right, thank you. Nice and straight and top. I thought. Can you get it like, taut, like really tight? Uh, sorry, trying pull, to do things well. Pull it towards you a little tighter. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts, yeah. Or you yeah, could you uh, reel through. the thing a little bit. Well, tighter. this is good. He's got it pretty taut. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Not bad for having two 
staff meetings. Yeah, <laughs> two staff yeah. meetings in one. Uh. Plus, we're still working, so each of those counts. The first one was pretty frustrating because it was like I was hoping that maybe we would get some concrete. <laughs> for that. Like, we really don't know what we're doing. Let's see, anybody else got any more questions? Let me know. Yeah, and the people are like, yeah. I don't know enough to ask a question. <laughs> Is that a question? Yeah. They're pretty terrible. Poor folks. Oh, here's an example of a little pebble nice. here. This is where we're real lucky to have someone like in among the uh, leader. Yeah. In among the mudstone here. The we see it. So just a little inclusion. So this comes from inside those blocks of mudstone. Um, this is what Jim meant by poor sorting here. Uh, you get good sorting uh, would be just all the same grain size, like sand dunes are well sorted. Yeah. Sand. Yeah. Would a, a conglomerate with variable size chunks be poorly sorted? Well, generally, most conglomerates are poorly sorted. Okay, yeah. Yeah, big, big alluvial fan deposits with boulders and mud. Very poorly sorted. Very yeah. poorly sorted. But even if it's, you know, when you have a clay with silt, mm -hmm. you know. That would still be poorly sorted. Right? Stone, yeah. You know, a clay stone would be pure clay. <laughs> uh huh. And you add some silt to it and a little bit of sand, it becomes a yeah. mudstone. Oh, we've got a question from Dr. Terra. Why would Nothronychus be the last American Therizinosaur? Is it just that's the latest one we found? Or? Right, yeah, right now, and yeah. uh, you know, and they may go extinct in North America. Hmm. Yeah, when we found it, you know, of course, it was the only one for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. And then we got Falcarius, and these beds right now, we think we might have four different kinds in yep. the yellow cap number. Huh. We think we got a big one, about almost as big as Nothronychus in this quarry. Uh huh. But much more primitive. Uh huh. This is the very beginning of the Cretaceous here, for those of you following along at home. But yeah. that's not yeah, yeah, certain, but I think, well, we have a big tooth. What age is Nothronychus? Is it like Centomania? Nope. It's Turonian. Turonian, okay. Yeah, uh, so it's about 93 million. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit you know, younger than that, but it's about 93. You're willing to venture a, a wild guess as to why Therizinosaurs may have gone extinct in North America? I think it might happen more than once. Oh. You know, Nothronychus almost certainly didn't come from Falcarius and these guys. It walked over from Probably Asia? It came over from Asia. It yeah. was closer to Asian tax or more dry things. Huh. These things we have here are much more basal. Uh -huh. You know, all of them. Yeah. And uh, when you look at the family tree, mm -hmm. you know, Nothronychus is on a branch that's mostly Asian things. And right. These guys, you know, some Asian things at the bottom of the tree too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, for all we know, they originated here. Oh, so there is or this could... could be another group that's here and yeah. then, then goes. Huh. Yeah, but it is really interesting because only yellow cats. Uh -huh. uh, we don't get. We haven't yet found them in the poison strip uh -huh. or in the, uh, you know, certainly Ruby Ranch or any intermediate rocks. Yeah, there's always much to learn, and and it's you know the more people out here doing work, the more things we're finding. Right? Mm -hmm. There's some pretty exciting, you know, they found it's a ceratopsian skeleton. Yeah. From the Muslim touch it, you know, it was announced at that meeting. Hmm. You know, I can't wait to see that thing published, see what it's like. Uh-huh. You know, you know, Cedar Mountain has a ceratopsian skeleton. Very primitive, <laughs> but still. Muslim touch? Yeah. Is that the thing that, uh... Watch his laptop. <laughs> yeah, probably trying to. Plaster, yeah. Paris, and electronics. Not the yeah, best company. Kind of... Yeah, no, it's. MAA2469, welcome, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Oh, man. So Therizinosaurus Theris got big really fast? I mean... Well, this would be the oldest, and if it is what it is, uh -huh. you know, it's pretty big. Yeah. Huh. Valkyrus, which is a little younger, mm -hmm. and Gemini Raptor, which is also a Therizinosaur. Uh-huh. We used you to know. think it was a Troodontid, right? That's how it was originally described. Yeah. I go, hey, that's a Troodontid. I said, that's great, write a paper. <laughs> Um, 
But when Lindsay Zano speaks up about Arizona stores, uh-huh. you listen. Yeah. <coughs> Classic. And she's the expert. Um, Alex asks, if there's one dinosaur you could save from extinction, what would it be? And what's a super endangered bird right now? Um... <laughs> Sphinx macaw or something? Oh yeah, Sphinx's macaw, I think. Or Sp Sphinx. Sparks's macaw. Non-avian dinosaur, I assume. Yeah, I'm sure they meant non-avian the dinosaur. dinosaur in the world. Yeah, Gastonia. Gastonia. You miss him, you know, you set him up so you can build a saddle, <laughs> hold on to the dorsal horn. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody should draw a picture of you riding a Gastonia like a... Uh, like a horse, or like uh, what's his name from Blazing Saddles on the, the water buffalo. <laughs> well, it. Was it a water buffalo or? A... I think it was. No, well, it was a buffalo. Or, yeah. No, not a buffalo, nice. buffalo. But yeah. Like, big bull. Like. I think some hadrosaurs can make good pack animals. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Really big, really at least. Really I mean, shoot, they've got to be strong. And they have that tall. Ridge on their back. It yeah, those pretty easy to sit. Huh. I mean, it might be too narrow to sit on. I don't yeah, know. it's pretty narrow. <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah. I guess it depends. <laughs> yeah, they do have kind of a then. blade yeah. on their back. They're not quite so. Tall. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're bigger than my butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we ride bikes. Bikes are pretty narrow. So, yeah, cards and bags. They're not sharp at the yeah. top. Oh, to be fair. I'm just mapping them before I ask what Those have come to a point, and they all yeah, seem to have a, a horn. Oh, no, you know, a bridge of horn going down there. Three of those are one. Oh, a lot of these are spitters. Huh? You mean uh, okay, so iguanodontians? Yeah. Yeah. Or hydrosaurs? Hydrosaurs. You think they've got the, almost like an iguana? The spines? Well, they're they're longer, you know, the head, but they're they come, they're sharp at the right, top. The neural spines or the... No, the the, the uh, big scales down the midline of their back. Oh, you think they'd actually have like a, a they've sagittal... They've preserved. Oh, okay. you, know, you go to the Utah, that, yeah. you go to the Utah Museum of Natural History, look through the glass, those big things look like butterflies. Uh -huh. Those are those flattened. Huh. But, and definitely Gryposaurus has them a bunch Please. of them. Yeah, shoot, Brachylophosaurus has it too, like yeah, the Leonardo yeah, specimen. Like, it's Come to think of it. Yeah. yeah Ceratosaurus has it. You know, uh huh. So different, they have bone on it. Right, those are osteoderms, yeah. 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 That's one of the things. Generally, Archosaurus have paired armor on their back, and uh -huh. Allosaurus, Dardiflorus all do. But, uh, these other guys. Yeah. and Ornithiscians and, uh, Theropods, it seems to be a single row. Squamates, too, yeah, like iguanas with their mm -hmm. sagittal spines. Yeah. yeah. That's why, you know, Steve Zirkus was so insistent that Stegosaurus had one row of plates. Huh. It's gotta be like my iguana. Uh huh. Sorry you're wrong, and. <laughs> sorry you're wrong, one out. Ceratopsies could be right, too. We can start. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah they're really cool. Be pretty nice. Get the leads on those brow horns. <laughs> Turn their head that way. Until they get mad and then just... The elbow <laughs> sarah like, top. Like just sit on their yeah. forehead. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. Use the frill of the back. That's oh, what people yeah. do with the... Uh, the dinosaur park dinosaurs up in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. Wow. Uh, there's a picture of Phil Curry at like six years old or something. Good and he's like climbing on the Triceratops horns and leaning against the frill. Nah, yeah. When I was in Dynamation, I remember sitting in the lab. Uh -huh. you know, and looking out the window. I realized this kid doing uh, chin-ups on the Taurosaurus horn. <laughs> Dad's just sitting on a bench just popping them off. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Presumably he was not supposed to be doing that. No. <laughs> In fact, I'm kind of amazed it didn't break. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't some built quality for that. construction. Yeah, I wasn't that built for that, but you know, the steel frame under the latex and up padding. Uh huh. You know, there was metal in those big horns. And the nerve of some people, that's that's nuts. Yeah. Um, and it was unbelievable, you know, his dad counting them off. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Because <laughs> you know, there weren't many people in the building. You know. uh -huh. 
so I don't think he realized anybody was watching. I wish I had videotaped it. <laughs> this is a pretty extraordinary image. Why not to do in a museum? <laughs> but people can be, you know, terrible. Oh, yeah. Shoot, when I, one of my, it might have been the first year I volunteered at UCMP when I was in high school. Um, I was assigned the task of casting one of the, the Wonkel Rex's manual ungules. Because during a big, like, uh, donor thing, when, like, they were, the department brought in a bunch of wealthy people to have, like, a soiree, somebody just snapped off one of the claws as a souvenir, apparently. Which during one? The, uh, this, what? the Wonkel Rex cast oh, yeah? at uh, UCMP oh, in Berkeley. Yeah. I understand that the Despletosaurus at the ROM, mm -hmm. someone stole two of the claws and they were real. Oh, shoot. Oof. Yeah, because they were just right over, you know, just went uh -huh. over and you know, pulled off. And, and at the Museum of Western Colorado, uh -huh. they had a bunch of Camarasaur stuff laid out, you know, where there's a you know, rail. Yeah. And it probably didn't notice it for weeks as they realized all the ungles were gone. Yeah. You know, someone stole them and shoved them in their coat or something and yeah. got them out of the building. And some people. You know, someone walked out with Martha's bronze allosaurus from her office at work. You know, she had a bronze allosaurus claw. Yeah? Get from Jim Madsen. And, Ugh. You know, it was there forever. I coveted it well. Uh-huh. You know, Apparently yeah, somebody else did yes, too. Yes, yeah, someone else did too. I don't know, yeah. Jimmy, you had motive and opportunity. I had motive and opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Alas, it went to someone not as deserving as me. That's <laughs> true. Uh, sad. I was really, I was not, I was probably almost as upset as her. Uh-huh. Because yeah. it was, it was like, oh man, that's neat. Mm -hmm. you know, big, solid bronze. Episodes. How big was the claw? It was a big one. Yeah. You know. Wasn't quite as big as the one I have in the, with the sheath. But gotcha. Was, yeah. You know, I was picturing like that. Getting yeah. toward that size. I've got one of uh, one of Big Al's manual ungules at home. I made a cast of it when I was yeah. at MOR. That's only like that long. Yeah, which, like it's not. Which finger though? You know. It's the thumb. It is the thumb. Yeah. 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 Big Al's not as big as Al's or as again. No, not even close. Yeah. It's Shoot. Like a, you didn't yeah, know yeah. those stickers that Natalie sent? Did you grab any of those rectangular ones or? They are. They should be some in a box back yeah. in the camp. Oh, okay. Or, you know, they're with the maps and things, not with the grids. Uh, what happened? Oh, yeah, they should be in the box with the uh, claws. Oh, okay. Because when I went into the office the other day, they were all gone. I was like, you know, just oh, travel? Oh, yes. I didn't take but a few. Yeah, oh, just the rectangular ones. I mean, there was some of the square ones were still there, but maybe you uh, didn't take them. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess it's like, Averagely sized owl. I like that. That's not legitimately looking like someone's geology research. Right, right. <laughs> Alex wants to know, is there any way to contact Jack Horner? You know, he's on Twitter. You can find him on there. Yeah. You can't read it, but he's on there. <laughs> <laughs> I think his handle is at Dusty Dino, but don't tell him I sent you. Tree gets messages all the time. Yeah, it's amazing these things just spit out. Yeah, shoot. We had almost no rain at all for the first two weeks, and now, last night and now. Ugh. A lot, but yeah. I think the gear will be okay for now. Mm -hmm. I don't know not much I can do here until I do nap. I can sort of do that tomorrow. Some burlap would help, though. Uh, no, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's just a passion. Big get bags in the middle. Covered up. Yeah, not too worried about it. Yeah, just keep growing and growing. 
It's nice that these block most of the rain. When we use the, the mesh tarps, they block, I don't know, maybe a third of the rain. Yeah, I want it all drip through eventually. Yep. You know? But those mesh tarps are certainly way better in the wind. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. They like thunder, but it's tarp. <laughs> I'm gonna make Danny nervous. Everybody's doing a good job today. No good. I think we met our performance goals. <laughs> I'm not sure if we really met our stretch performance goals. <laughs> Did we make sure to check in with our efficiency officer? I mean, it's like, okay, how many bones are we going to prep per month? <laughs> well, well at Brain Case, it took four months, so that kind of ruins the record. Yeah, we're only yeah. going to do really easy ones. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on long bones. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, like absolutely. we're doing a lot of work. That's right. As long as we strive for excellence, <coughs> Jim will be okay. They love us. Striving for excellence. There are <laughs> nope, they do what love we us. Need is it's a legislature and the administrators don't have a clue about <laughs> what we do. They should watch the stream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they're alerted to it. They might be sure. watching it. Sure. Cool. Going, Kirkland better not talk about me anymore. <laughs> It is the day, the invisible day. Yeah. No individual. <laughs> some people are watching in some. It's the nature of government. <laughs> okay. But you now it's sad the public has such an opinion that they are any amount of work for the state or county or sit around and lean on their shovels all day. If they knew the thriftiness that we have to exhibit and. 15 year old paintbrushes and <laughs> broken ice picks. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, we, I mean, what we pull off of the budget we have is. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, like, I'm, I, you know, it's amazing. You'd be a, nobody in the world would be able to match that potentially. Yeah. Like, and people don't believe it. I yeah. Mean, they just do not believe it. Yeah. You know? Can you. Is it okay for you to mention what our budget is, such as it is for this summer? Like. I don't really know this year, but it's, it's only a, there's only a few thousand total. Yeah. What we kind of consider discretionary money. Uh huh. But that money also goes for things like, you know, if I got to gather data on a on yeah. a paleo. So vandalism. it's a few thousand for the entire year, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if the public doesn't vandalize many sites, uh -huh. we get to do more work in the field. Right. You know, but you know, it's like you know, the whole thing with like the Utah Raptor block. It's uh -huh. all end of the year money. We uh -huh. did a lot of that work in November when we're going, okay, you know, uh -huh. you know we're not going to probably have any more vandalism now and, and how much money we have left over and you know, plan it out. It was always end of the year money. Mm -hmm. So our, our whole season here, you know, digging in this quarry, for instance, how much do you think this, how much money have we spent on this? How much money will we spend this season? This, year, in this, this season? Yeah, in this quarry. Be like nine hundred bucks. Yeah, and most of that food. Yeah. You know, most of this equipment's recycled from past years. Yeah. Uh, 
or personal equipment that people have brought with them. Um, a little bit of equipment, and then, yeah. I mean, the big expense is Jim's salary. He makes mega bucks. Uh -huh. Mega bucks. Yeah. Working for the state. And then Six or seven billion a year, right? <laughs> no. Well, and you get, um, Oh boy! It's uh, stock incentives too. Yeah, the stock incentives. <laughs> like like the Chinese, I get a bonus every time I name a dinosaur. You know. I wish. No, I mean I'm sure it's. And that's why they write such short papers. Our, uh, uh -huh. You know, they, they never Between write big monographs. Ethan and Jim and I, yeah, I mean there's going to be thousands in. In like salary, 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 yeah, that makes sense. Salary yeah. And benefits. But. Yeah. But I mean, but, shoot, the yeah, majority of us are volunteers. A lot of that they're paying anyway. It's yeah. like, what is our time going to be focused on? Let's you know, take this. this down. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. TOS says only a few thousand dollars to conduct these expeditions. Now, this is like probably less than a thousand for this right now. For what, three weeks? Yeah. 24 days, something like that? Yeah. yeah. Our, our per diem is extra in the vehicles. That, yeah. That adds, that probably may add another thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been working on the Mancos project, and you know, we've been putting a lot of miles on. Right. Yeah. Oh, Oops. Yeah, this is that. That's mine. Is that that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay. Let's see. I didn't know. I just, I just it still works. Yeah. Cover my fossils. All right, let me go ahead and wrap this stream up, and then help with the takedown. But yeah. Everybody say uh, goodbye to the crew for the day. Goodbye. <laughs> and if, if everyone looked tired, rough night. Yeah, we had a big storm last night. That's why we're not. Yeah. Yeah, you should see my tent right now. Yeah. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you had a good time today. I did, despite being tired, not necessarily firing on all cylinders. But, uh, yeah, before we wrap up, let's find somebody to raid here, preferably, ideally, somebody who's doing some science on Twitch, like we're doing, so we can uh, help out with their science outreach, too. Uh, let's see who we've got. Um, so don't go away just yet, everybody. Mm -hmm. Go to Twitch. And let's see, who have we got? Hoot House, Astro Connect, Cyan Streams. Let's go raid Cyan Streams, why don't we? Yeah, that'll be great. My channel, chat. Raid. Science underscore, underscore streams. There we go. Well, thank you, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your questions. Uh, everybody from those question askers to those quiet lurkers, thanks for being here, and I hope you had a good time. And we're getting raindrops on the lens. Shoot. But, uh, yeah. Be back tomorrow, hopefully more refreshed, more dinosaur bones to show off, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be nice. More questions answered and all that good stuff. So thank you everybody for your, maybe most especially for your financial support. I couldn't do this without your help, so thank you very, very much for that. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to share this, this excellent work being undertaken by the Utah Geological Survey here, and uh, yeah, yeah. I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. We had a question for you, Adam. Don't go too far off microphone. Yes. What is your favorite sea creature and why? Oh, we got another raid. Hold on.